Hello, hello everybody, and welcome. Um, let me see. Oh, my model is not doing the talky talk. Hold on. Hello. Hello. Okay, it just comes. Hello. Hello, Doc. Welcome into your first stream. Very excited to have you. And we're going to be doing some tarot card reading today very very excited hope you're excited and then we're gonna we're gonna um hopefully have a good time today maybe learn a little bit about ourselves about each other so strap in hope you're ready guys I'm gonna change the next scene here. I know, I know, I know. All right, hi everybody. Welcome to the stream today. We're so excited to have you. King Pro, of course, of course. I know you have a bit. Okay, perfect. I, I look forward to chatting with you later. All right, awesome, you guys. I'm so glad that you're here today. Um, we're gonna get started here pretty soon, but um, before that, we're gonna look at how beautiful these cards are. Um, I did post the user on both my Twitter and Instagram if you wanted to check out. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and dump these out. But um, where I am right now is incredibly hot. So if it gets too noisy in terms of background noise, please let me know and we will fix that as soon as I can. Just because I have my window open. Got to get a little bit of a draft going on, you know? All right, guys. So we have this beautiful deck. If anybody's seen Sailor Moon, it literally has nearly every single character of Sailor Moon. Even some of the ones that, like, I'm a big fan and I've never heard of. You know what I mean? So, I'm excited to get into this deck. Um, Alright. Do we have any volunteers or would we like me to go first? Because I can go first. That's fine. I'm being told by the little voice in my head that I need to go first. All right, guys. So we're going to kind of see how this goes. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to spread the cards out and we're going to we're going to kind of search for the ones that have that are telling me something, that have that energy um, and intention of um, the universe wanting to share its uh, message with me. So we're going to go ahead and start here in just a second.
All right. Sorry about that short little interval break. Um, my silly neurodivergency has forgotten that the uh, camera we're using for the hand cam um, is my phone, and that's where all of my uh, tarot card um, information is. So <laughs> we we fixed it. We fixed it very quickly. But here we go again. I'm going to go ahead, and I want to take a deep breath and I want to center myself and make sure that I'm giving the intention to the cards here. So we're going to go ahead and take a deep breath. And now just set an intention, whether it's for a particular meaning you're looking for, and you can put a time period on that as well. Um, and then we just let the cards do the talking. So here we go. All right. So let's go ahead and spread these out. And forgive me, these gloves can be very clunky. <laughs> So I'm trying to spread it out as best as I can. Although there are several cards that just want to hide. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put, place my hands over the cards and I'm going to kind of run my fingers over it. Anything that jumps out, I'll pull. Um, and then we'll go ahead and read from there. So there's a card in here that it wants me to have. But my gloves don't want to have it. Is it this one? Well, it didn't want to come out though. Because if you don't want to force something out, because that means the universe didn't want you to have it. I think it's one of these cards, and I think it's the top card. So we'll go ahead and we'll place that top card here to the side. We'll go ahead and place that one back. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll go until I feel like I want to stop. So we can do three, four, five card readings. It is completely up to the universe, unfortunately, not up to me. So. Let's go ahead and see here. Okay, I'm sensing, of course, I always end up on like a stack of cards. All right, let's see here. There's a card in here that it wants me to have. Let's well, see, there are several cards here. So we, we want to pick one of these. So we've got five here. this one the one that's least hidden I mean most hidden so this one here and you know what I might stop at three but we'll see we'll see okay let's go for one more because I don't want to make my reading too long and I want to save my time for anybody else who has come to visit who'd like a reading for themselves. Alright, I have a feeling, yep, this one right here is that third card that we have. So we'll set that off to the side. We're going to go ahead and condense the deck back up and thank the deck for its small amount of service here. Thank you very much. And we're going to set it off to the side as we bring in the three cards that the universe wanted me to know. Okay, so we've got these three cards here and we're gonna gently turn them over. So I've got the five of wands. I've got the king of swords inverted. Now, when I do inversions, it might, I might read it both ways because sometimes when we pull things um, inverted maybe is not necessarily the message that they're trying to send, but we'll see. 
and then this one is the knight of wands so we've got a lot of wands going on here we'll see what we can do with that all right so first we're gonna read what we've got here with the five of wands so you can already see also like these care this this art is so pretty um this um, is from, I believe, season three of Sailor Moon. Um, and the art here is just so cute. All right, here we go. All right. So here I've got my five of wands meaning. It says from the image on the card the symbolism in the five of wands suggests that there's a form of conflict in one's life it might be an existing conflict or one that is brewing that may eventually blow up in one's face it may also depict a problem in communication for example in a situation where no one really wants to listen to the other meaning that no agreement or understanding takes place this may signify problems in a group of people who aren't patient enough to listen um, to what anyone else is saying and they only want to be heard, and since none others will listen, they will argue all at once. Much of this can be solved by someone taking the first step to try and initiate communication in such a way that you suggest that everyone airs out what they have to say one at a time. Um, so it sounds like there will be a f um, there's um, some sort of situation in my life in which. Um, communication is seeming to be difficult this can be one-on-one -on -one. this can be with a group of people um, but it is very important to kind of heed this warning and um, listen to what this car is trying to say by doing this you will be able to address the problem and everyone will be heard meaning they will all be satisfied the Five of Wands can also mean that you are or will be facing competition in an area that you are not used to. This can be at work or school where you meet people with the same abilities as you who pose a great challenge, leading to feelings of jealousy, greed, and envy. This tarot card encourages that you accept the competition as a way to improve yourself without feeling any malice towards them. This means that you should learn how to cope with them in a civil way. Um, the Five of Wands um, could also mean a personal struggle you were dealing with on your own. This can be on a number of issues that affect you, hence you need to address them and find a solution for them. You will need to identify where the problems are and offer a solution that will handle in this case. So this can not only mean problems with other people, but it can be problems within yourself as well. Um, and and, um, and we'll, we'll get um, to how these cards I feel relate to me in my life at the very end of the reading but more for right now we're just trying to get the meaning of every card that we have out here all right so and um for any um upcoming readings today um we can do a general reading we can do um specific readings as well so one uh, targeted towards love one targeted towards career and then one can be targeted also toward uh, like finances how that's looking um, how about since since I feel um, like we should just read all of what this means in all three areas we can do that really quick um, I won't read the full thing I'll just read kind of the short little blurbs um, so the love meaning for this is competition between suitors conflict between lovers and playful banter okay um, the career meaning uh, meaning competition between colleagues competitive work environment and a, a conflict in your work environment the finance meanings means financial instability and conflicts about money all right so that's what we have for the most part going on with this five of wands card we'll go ahead and go and move on to the king of swords here
So sorry guys, I am just trying to navigate something with these gloves and it, it becomes 10 times more difficult to navigate a touch screen, anything with gloves on. I mean like, anybody. <laughs> I feel like somebody can relate here. <laughs> All right, so we'll go for this and let's head to the swords. So this one's gonna be special because it's inverted, but let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and read the um, the inverted um, meaning first. All right. So a reversal or a um, uh, me, it can mean that the card means something kind of the opposite of what is going to mean uh, when it's upright. So um, the King of Swords in reverse shows tyrannical, abusive, and manipulative habits. It may indicate the misuse of one's mental power, drive, and authority. This is an illustration of persuasion and manipulation so as to fulfill selfish desires. The King of Swords reversal means may also imply that you are showing off uh, your level of intelligence by using big words when discussing ordinary topics. Um, another interpretation is that you may also be a loose cannon, especially um, when there are angry outbursts and impulses. Um, so that's what the reverse meaning means. Uh, we'll go ahead and go over the regular meaning, but first we'll give the blurbs on the reverse meanings on the love, on the career, and on the finances for the, the King of Swords here. So the King of Swords reverse for love means selfish, abusive lover, and the low standards for love. The reverse career meanings can be dominating, power hungry, um, colleague, irrational um, work decisions, can be that, um, Reversed finances meaning irrational financial decisions and lack of financial discipline. Okay, so we'll go back up here to see the upright meaning and the blurb of that. Um, if we are going to turn this card and mean upright like that, and it's Helios, uh, the unicorn. Um, it means reason, authority, discipline, integrity, morality, serious, high standards, and strict um, for the upright meaning for that. But for this case, we're going to read it as it, it's reversed, okay? And then this last one, the Knight of Wands. So we're back to the wands again um, here for this final card. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Again, give me just a second, guys. Everything's a little bit slow moving with these gloves on, unfortunately. All right. All right, sorry about that. And the Knight of Wands. So since it's upright, um, the Knight of Wands symbolism is straightforward. When it appears, it means it's a great time to get away and travel. The person should feel charged up and full of life. One is ready to get things done. It's adventurous and he can find fun things to do no matter where he is. There's never a dull moment when the Knight of Swords is around. When the Knight of Swords shows up in a reading, it seems to suggest the seeker wants to complete important tasks. One wants to impress others with one's skill and knowledge. The card also shows up when the person is planning to move to another place of residence. If you're starting a creative project, then you should do so with lots of energy and enthusiasm. However, you should balance it with realistic and well-rounded views. You should also have a plan that takes into account the consequences of your actions. Of course, always, you know. Of course, we have Queen Barrel from season one of 
Sailor Moon, you know, the big baddie. But, I mean, look at her. She is a baddie. Getting the Knight of Wands in a reading can also mean that there's an event that you don't expect to happen soon. It is accompanied by the Eight of Wands, which I'm three off, so that's good, I guess. You should expect a lot of changes in your life, so, so maybe just a little bit of changes. <laughs> Um, more often than not, the Knight of Wands indi instigate, in indicates a hasty change of job, residence, or anything in your life. So the upright meanings of each of these in the love, career, and finances category. So in love, it means fearless, courageous lover, difficult to commit, rash, and erratic relationship. Or upright career meaning, meaning um, passion and energy for work, brave decisions, new business favored. Upright finances, meaning sudden influx of money, using finances for travel and expanding horizons. Um, so in general, it seems like this reading um, ended up being for my um, not only probably finances, but also my career. I mean, we're starting here um, with a new venture in life, and it seems like it's warning me that um, not to get this big head. And thank you so much, Haruki. I, I really, these cards are beautiful. I love these cards. Um, it seems like I need to be wary of um, um, becoming a little toxic um, in a workplace if somebody I find is you know giving me a run for my money so to speak um, and that just means that um, I need to look at it as a way to improve myself rather than um, taking it negatively so that's what this card is warning me um, so uh, uh, altogether in general it's warning me that if I'm to change careers or if, if I'm to um, explore a new venture, to have a lot of enthusiasm and energy and knowledge put into it, but don't get too cocky about it, is basically what this is telling me. So, um, I mean, this is good information to have. And um, if at any time um, a card confuses you, what we can do is we can pull another card for clarification. But this one seemed pretty straightforward. I really don't have any more questions for the universe um, other than, um, you know, I wonder what sudden event is coming. I like how it said sudden changes. So, I mean, I'll have to be on the lookout for that. So, and that concludes my reading. So, we thank these cards very much for giving us our, um, our information we needed from the universe. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, then put them back in the deck. <laughs> all right so um, now i'm done with my reading um do we have any anybody who would like to go next anybody that is searching for maybe some answers in the universe um anybody who um is wondering about their love life about their career life about their finances going forward these cards can give you some answers um if anybody would like to go ahead, raise your hand, we can or like shoot in the chat, and we can get started with that. But until then, I'm gonna look at these cards because they're so pretty. Look at Chibi, Chibi Moon, so pretty. All right. Anybody else? Anybody want a reading? <laughs> you want a Maya? Okay, okay. All right. This one next one will be for Maya. All right. All right, Maya. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give these cards a shuffle. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my, no, I mean, mine can be pretty blunt sometimes. Mine can be pretty blunt sometimes. Um, like, if, if you know, it won't pull punches. If I need to hear something that I don't want to hear, it'll tell me. 
And then I'll be like, are you sure? And then it'll be like, what do you mean? I'm definitely sure. All right, so we're gonna give these a shuffle. Sorry, my shuffling is not so good with these gloves on. It's usually way better. We need to give them a shuffle. We need to tell the universe that we're searching for something different now, for a different beautiful soul in this world. Ooh, sorry, loud noises. The cards are speaking, they're shouting. <gasps> oh, you wanna go next? Doc, is it, it, Maya, is it okay if Doc goes next or did you really, really wanna go next? Cause I can put you second if you want. I can say, okay, so Maya, Maya, you're right after Doc, okay, um, <laughs> are you sure, are you sure, okay, so my, so we'll put Maya first, and then Doc can go next after Maya, how's that, okay, so, all right, Maya, here we go, this is your, this is your deck, okay, because I have been shuffling it with the intentions, of Maya wanting more insight. Hi, Taro. Welcome in. So happy to have you. All right, Maya. We're going more insight into love life, more insight into the relationship that Maya has in her life. We would love to know, universe, what you have for Maya today, okay? All right. One more time here. All right, Maya. So the way I'm going to do it for you is a little different than I was doing for myself. So I'm able to be here and to touch the cards and to kind of see which one jumps out at me. Um, what we're going to do for you um, is we're go I'm going to um, sort out the cards kind of like this, like one by one, and we'll put them out on the table, okay? And this might be a little difficult because sometimes chat delays, but I'm going to try my very best. So you're going to tell me when I'm putting down cards, when you want me to, when you feel like the universe is telling you to tell me to stop. Okay. So I'm going to go like this and you're going to, the universe will tell you which card it wants to tell you to relay the message that you're looking for. And you just tell me to stop. Okay. I'll get your confirmation very quick before I start doing the things. Okay, cool. All right, baby. Here we go. I'm going to go I'm going to go not super slow, but I'm going to go slow enough. All right. So I've stopped on this one. We'll put that one aside. And then we're gonna keep going and you're gonna tell me when to stop again, okay? We got a lot of deck left, so if I have to, if you have to wait a, a little bit, it's okay. Because there's lots more information. Okay. I did stop as soon as I saw your stop, so there's this one. And then we'll try one more time. So unless do you want more than three cards, because I can do that too, the universe might say, hey, maybe it's a four card. We don't know. Oh, <gasps> do you remember how I was saying it might be a four card? And this might be due to to my gloves, but you know what I, you know what happened when you said stop? I had two cards in my hand, so maybe that's it. Maybe it's a four card one. So here we go. We'll have that one to stop, and we'll tell the cards. Thank you so much for your messages, and you're going to continue delivering the messages. So here we go. So we'll go ahead, and we'll put these cards to the side, the ones that that aren't being used in the message today. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put these out in the order that, that they were drawn. So we've got one, two, 
three and four. All right, so you got your four cards here. Okay, and now we're gonna turn them over one by one and kind of announce what they are and then we'll go ahead and look into the meetings, Maya, okay? So what we've got here, the first one, ooh, is the Eight of Cups. We, and we like cups. Look at all those cups because these are the, this is the chalice from um, Sailor Moon S. Uh, the, the purity chalice is so pretty. But um, Pala Pala is on this card. She's super cute. All right. Ooh, the sun. And this is a major arcana card. Um, super Sailor Moon and Super Sailor Chibi Moon. Look at them. They're super cute. All right. And then this card, we've got a reversed page of cups interesting i'm seeing i'm seeing a pattern here we're gonna have got some cups in this one and then last one here we've got the chariot which is another major arcana card so look at look look we got all the whole family here see that may or may not be a sign so we'll see what we can do here because we'll start with the eight of cups um and then to very shortly kind of go over things, um, the suit, well, at least just over cups themselves as a suit. Um, when you're looking at cups as a suit, um, it rules over um, things that are associated with emotions, um, creativity, and the unconscious, as well as your intuition. So whatever that means to you, take that but we are going to go ahead and read the eight of cups here so i'm not only going to read the love one i'm also just going to read the meaning in general because sometimes you uh, also find meaning in just the general meaning as well um, the eight of cups signifies time for change or transition by means of walking away from something just like a caterpillar has to die before transport, transforming into a beautiful butterfly, we all need to transform our lives from time to time. This is the case after being tired of living um, what was the day-to-day -day and embarking on a journey that will help one have a deeper understanding of life in general. Um, so the upright meaning of this for love, okay, because we're going to look at your relationships is gonna be, take some time to ask yourself whether your relationship is the one that you're happy with, if you're currently in one. The Eight of Cups tarot meaning indicates that there's often some soul searching that needs to be done on whether your partnership is the one that truly fulfills you. Can you imagine spending the rest of your life with this person and do they encourage you to be your best self? Um, do they encourage you to grow or instead are you with them because you're scared of being alone? going back into the dating scene again, that sort of thing. This is unfair to both you and your partner. It takes a lot of courage to look honestly within and answer these questions, as well as to walk away from a life that two of you have built together. So um, the meaning can be, um, if you're in a relationship, you um, are not necessarily in a happy one, um, and it is urging you maybe to rethink it and um, maybe see what goes on from there. Um, and if you're not necessarily in a relationship and you're single, um, it sounds like uh, that there might be some sort of like abandonment issues, whether it started in your childhood or whether that was something that you um, deal with on a general basis. Um, that's something that you need to sort of uh, look at and confront before entering into any sort of uh, future relationship with anybody. All right, so that is what the Eight of Cups means. Yes, it's always interesting. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and move on to the Major Arcana, but we can always go back if you have questions about a certain card. And like I said, if, if you feel like it's not 100% clear what it's trying to tell you, we can always do the same thing we were doing and pull a single card for clarification, okay? But we'll do that at the very end when you, uh, if you have any confusion. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the sun here. Uh, Major Arcana are always like super powerful cards. Um... 
So we have, what is it, number 15? Because the sun and the moon. All right. I mean, this seems like a happy card, though, so that's good. So the sun, meaning in general, um, represents success, abundance, and radiance. Like the sun itself, it gives strength and vitality to all those who are lucky enough to feel its rays. There is so much joy and happiness that is coming to you. Because of your own personal fulfillment, you provide others with inspiration and joy as well. People are drawn to you because they are capable of seeing the warm, beautiful energy in which you bring into their lives. You are also in a position in which you are capable of sharing your qualities as well as achievements with other people. You radiate love and affection towards those you care about the most. So, uh, the upright love meaning for the sun. With the sun comes light, life, and warmth. The sun tarot love meaning heralds much of the same in your relationship or your romantic life in general. There's happiness, celebration, and fulfillment in this card. Your relationship can be blossoming under this light, bringing the two of you closer together as you enjoy life's blessings. There is likely harmony now, and you can use this time to create an even closer connection with your loved one. Should you be single, now is also the time to step out and let yourself shine. Your, possibility, your positivity and radiance can be magnetic now and draw the kind of romance that you've dreamed of. So it seems like this could be a transitionary thing we're going on here. So it's like it's it's like present to future. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that's kind of seeming what it is. So it's it's like you're you I'm, and we'll get into it more at the very end. But like that's what I'm seeing so far. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the cups. I just think cups is is very appropriate for for what we're talking about here because it's definitely if we're talking love if we're talking romance cups is probably the suit you want to be seeing so we've got the page of cups here All right, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending, um, this is a reversed Page of Cups. So we can go ahead and read it both ways if you want. But um, first, I'm going to read the reversed. And then if you'd like to hear the other way, we can also um, kind of read it just in case um, there was a little bit of a fumble bumble. But usually the universe is trying to tell you something and, and it and it does reversals, uh, not on accident. So, Page of Cups reversal meaning, so this is in general, is that you're undergoing a block in your creativity. There are things and projects that you find interesting, but you seem to do them for other reasons than for the joy of it. And you may be doing them for money, for fame, or something else. A reverse page of cups can indicate that you should remember the joy that your products that your projects brought to you in the first place and and reclaim your imaginative spirit. Um, okay, so this means in love. Mm. Interesting. Okay, okay. I'll show you. I'll listen. I'll read the other side as well once I'm done here. So the love meaning for the pa reverse page of cups here. Um, shy, hesitant, and maybe a little awkward. The page of cups tarot love meaning can point to someone in your romantic life with these characteristics. They may react well to some much needed kindness, slowly opening up to you if they feel safe. Sometimes, however, this person may also... Uh, seem a bit emotionally immature. There can be temper tantrums, insecurity, and lots of nonsense. Should this card not represent a person, be aware of those traits within yourself. Have your insecurities gotten the best of you? How have that affected your romantic life? So, interesting, interesting. Um, we will go ahead and come up to the... the um, 
upright meaning. So I'm all for for kicks and giggles. We're gonna upright meaning this. Oh, this is such a pretty card. Sorry, <laughs> I know I keep saying that. Um, so the upright meaning. Um, one of the most important meanings of the Page of Cups is that you should be open to new ideas, especially ones that stem from intuitive inspiration. The card seems to state that such inspiration should be embraced, despite it something that you might not expect. It could lead to an adventure and many open doors. All right, Ooh, that sounds positive. Um, and the upright love meaning for this means that the person represented by the Page of Cups tarot love meaning is someone who is intuitive, creative, and emotional. They can often have an innocent and naive quality, regardless of their actual age. If this card doesn't point to a person in your life right now, happy surprises could be in store for you. If you're already in a relationship, you may be looking at it with fresh eyes, a sense of wonder and awe, and a newfound appreciation for the parts of your partner that you haven't seen before. If you're single, your approach to love can be one of childlike fascination. Everything about romance and potential partners can feel delightful and novel to you. So that's what that opposite meaning means. <laughs> you like the reverse one. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll go ahead and, and bring it back to reverse because um, it sounds like that connected more with you than, um, than the other side. Yeah, see, I'm, I told you, I told you, the universe, these, car, these cards really don't lie. And, the, and they will really come um, after you if you are, like, if you've been in denial about something, they will not be afraid to be like, hey, like, whoop. all right, sorry about that, again, with the gloves. All right, so let's look at this very final card here, which... Like I said, it could be this transitionary period for you, and this this might end up being a pretty important card. So let's see what the chariot has in store for you, AKA Tuxedo Mask, the one who doesn't really, let's be honest, he doesn't do a lot in the series. <laughs> he tries his best, and, and that's all we can ask. Well, we've got the Moonlight Knight and Darien or um, Mamoru, if, if you watched this sub. All right, so we're going to look at the upright general meaning really quick. The Chariot Tarot card is all about overcoming challenges and gaining victory through maintaining control of your surroundings. This perfect control and confidence allows you to be the charioteer to emerge victorious in any situation. The use of strength and willpower are critical in ensuring that you overcome the obstacles that lie in your path. The chariot's me message comes to you, make you stronger as you strive to achieve your goals. All right. And the love meaning is now is the time to take the wheel. Make sure you have a clear understanding of what you're looking for in love and romance. Once you know your destination, the chariot, tarot love, uh, the chariot tarot love meaning urges you to take action. When you take control of your love life, you are very likely to see rewards. Confidence, courage, and drive will lead you to success. As you move towards your goals, the chariot tarot love meaning, however, can also indicate the need for balance for the two urges represented by the two characters that we have in this card. His his uh, human form and his sort of, you know, masked form. Uh, they might pull you in different directions, but steering a clear path ahead means reining, in, re reining each one in so that you stay on the right path. This card can sometimes bring questions of whether the choices that you've made so far are balanced. Is your relationship suffering because of long hours at work? Are you so focused on the relationship that you've sacrificed too much of your individuality for it? The chariot asks us to take our lives back into our own hands and steer with determination. <laughs> so basically what we have here, um, Maya, my love, am I allowed to ask um, for the love uh, reading that we just did, are, are we doing it for somebody who is single or are we doing it for somebody who's in a relationship? 
If you'd not like to share, there's no pressure. I'll, I'll read it either. I'll read the whole thing either way. But I'd like to know. Because it'll, it'll, it'll help, but I can still do it anyway. These are, these are some, that's a good set of cards, though. It's like a family. <laughs> oh, but, um, what I'm kind of seeing here is there's some sort of, like, journey going on here. And, and the chariot's kind of just reminding you at the very end, just keep it balanced. So, um, in general, if, um, you are single, it sounds like it wants you to, um, make sure that you know, <laughs> all right, if you are single, um, it is, um, saying that, um, you know that you are, um, awkward and, and maybe, like, you feel that you might be emotionally immature. It's asking that you um, you take that into account and you work on those things within yourself in order to find what you're looking for in that relationship going forward. So um, it seems like this is where you're starting and you kind of end up here. The chariot is telling you that when you get in a relationship, um, that you want to make sure that you're not only um, balancing your own likes and your own personality and individuality, but you're also making sure that that other person also feels important in your life. Um, and then if you're in a relationship, it sounds like um, that you are in an unhappy relationship, that this relationship is not working out, and or you have been in this relationship um, past its expiration date because you um, don't want to go out into the dating scene. You don't want to, you know, have to put yourself out there again. You know, it's very scary. I totally get it. Like going out and finding somebody who will take care of you for, you know, ever and ever and, and love you unconditionally. That's such a, a difficult thing to do, especially if you're um, not so comfortable at being vulnerable. Um, so uh, it sounds like you're in a relationship that's not really working out. Um, and it sounds like you should um, assess that, maybe see if that's working for you. On the Eight of Cups? Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to bring the stack out again. And we'll get clarification on the Eight of Cups here. So um, what I'm going to do, again, is do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, sort through the cards. And then I'm going to um, have you ask me when to stop. And then we that one card, hopefully it will be one card, will be the clarification that you're looking for. So here, really quick, I'm just going to keep just going through really quick here what's the universe about to say i don't know we're gonna we're gonna figure it out oh i put my hand on a card and you said stop so we're gonna take that card and we're gonna put all these other ones back we might need you again later babies but we thank you for being our eyes and ears into the universe. All right, clarification card. Do, 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 do. Let's see what it is. <sighs> Got the Ace of Swords. So this is um, Furuhada, uh, who is Andrew in the sub of Sailor Moon. But um, Swords is interesting. Okay, so I'm going to put it over the Eight of Cups because this is what we were asking for clarification on. So let's go ahead and see. So the, the suit of swords um, is used for intelligence, logic, truth, ambition, conflict, and communication. So that could be good. It could be bad. Well, you will see. But since it's upright, usually upright meanings mean stuff that's, that's positive. I say usually. But swords... Um, the more swords you get, the more painful it can be. Luckily, you got one. <laughs> so just one sword usually means good things. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. 
Uh, all right. So just the general meaning of this um, Ace of Swords here. Uh, and we'll get into the love meaning in a moment. As with all aces, the Ace of Swords indicates that one is about to experience a moment of breakthrough. With its sharp blade representing the power of intellect, the sword has the ability to cut through deception and find truth. In layman's terms, this card represents that moment in which one can see the world from a new point of view, as a place that is filled with nothing but new possibilities. It is therefore the best time to work on your goals as the aces give you green lights and are signals for awaiting opportunities and new beginnings. I'm, I'm hearing good things for this card, Maya. I like this so far. All right. <laughs> All right, the love meaning. This one's interesting. You'll find intellectual discussion particularly attractive right now with the Ace of Swords tarot love meaning. Communication with your partner, discussing important issues at the moment, can be rewarding for you. You should pay particular attention to facing problems or obstacles in a relationship with clarity and honesty. You may be able to find that confronting these issues can lead to greater harmony and understanding between the two. Though sometimes discussions can become heated, it is more important to speak about them instead of sweeping them under the rug. In the long term, by learning these communication skills, your relationship will become stronger. If you're in a relationship that has already been in turmoil, which I assume that that's what this Eight of uh, Cups is saying, um, you, or you're recovering from a breakup, the Ace of Swords tarot love meaning can also be an encouragement meant for you to cut out toxic people and attitudes in your love life so as Haruki was saying earlier these cards are being pretty blunt with you that if if you're in a relationship um sounds like you need to take a hard look at this relationship um whether that be in your um in your uh, intimate relationship or it, it sounds like it didn't even go past um, to like uh, platonic relationships as well. It sounds like if you have any toxic people in your life, it could be affecting your relationship if you have a relationship or if you're single, it sounds like that could be affecting your ability to get into relationship, which is also very interesting. Uh, this, this clarification card was nice. I'm glad you went for the clarification because that was... That was pretty good. Um, Cause I don't know about you. Uh, so it either sounds like, um, <laughs> I know, <laughs> uh, it sounds like if, uh, if you're in a, a relationship and um, you have hope for it, uh, it sounds like this card is saying that if you hone your communication skills and you can find a common ground, that you might be able to save it. <gasps> Hi, Mitski. Hi, baby. Welcome in. Um, so, does that did that clear anything up for you, Maya? Did that did that clear anything up, or did it make it more confusing? Cause I'm I'm gonna I'll let you know right. Now. <laughs> Yanni Bunny's like I'm invested. I've I've got we got to do this. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not like I'm. Uh, this is pretty. This is a pretty good uh, reading we got going on here. But um, if you're still confused, Maya, we can still pull for clarification. We can pull another card. That's totally fine. Um, but if this is clearly speaking to you, um, let me know. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, that's usually like the, the deck has its own way of explaining things to you that may be like your own brain has been avoiding. And and this is like, you know, that blunt friend that like tells you how it is. If you ask if the outfit looks good, they're going to tell you straight to your face if it doesn't look good <laughs> and that you should change <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So maybe we want to take a look at, at um, your life in general and kind of um, because it sounds like they might be connected in some way. Maybe what's going on in your general life is, is um, sort of 
for lack of a, bl- a better word, cock blocking you um, into finding uh, a further relationship with somebody um, or a, a deeper connection. All right. Do we want more clarification, Maya? Or, or are, do you think that this, this reading has been sufficient and you're not confused? If you are confused, I am so fine with picking more cards for clarification for you. You think you're good? All right. All right, Maya, we're going to thank these lovely cards because they gave you the answers that you were probably searching for. It gave you a little bit. <laughs> gave you a little bit of, of hopefully answers and, and hopefully um, you can form your own path forward. All right. Thank you so much, babies. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the cards back together. All right. Doc, are you still in here, my lovely? I know you were up next. Yes, okay. All right, so we're going to, again, because we want to in, in kind of infuse the intention in here, I'm going to shuffle again, but with, with the intention of Doc. So, Doc, what sort of intentions are you, are you asking the cards for? Are we, are we looking for general life advice? Are we looking for financial advice? Are we looking for career advice? Or are we going to ask about, you know, our relationships, just like Maya was asking about earlier? Because we'll kind of just, well, we shuffle here. General. Okay, okay. General readings can be good sometimes. All right. So, Doc, I want you to kind of, because the universe, the universe is all around us. It is um, all-knowing, all-seeing. <laughs> um, and I want you to kind of think about, in general, what you're searching for um, in your life and what answers you hope these cards will be telling you. Um, you know, just kind of think about it, put that intention out into the universe, um, and hopefully the cards will be able to answer that for you, okay? So we're going to do a couple more shuffles, just to make sure this, that, that Doc's intentions are thoroughly shuffled up in here, and that the universe knows that this is somebody else who is, who is asking for some answers, All right. All right. Here we go here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing, Doc. Okay. You saw that with Maya. So I'm going to go ahead and go one by one through the cards. You tell me when to stop. If um, it feels like We'll just pull for maybe three to four cards right now. But as you saw with Maya, we intended three cards and it came out with four. It was so crazy. So here we go. So we'll go one by one here. Okay, Doc, you just tell me when to stop. And, and, and that'll be it, okay? So... Okay, so I've got this one card, and when you said stop, I had it in my hand. Here we go again. We're just going to continue going. And it's okay if nothing jumps out to you because we can, oh, got you just, at... whoa, here we do it again, we did it again. So we've got two cards in one pull. All right, do we, I'm, I think we continue for one more pull. This might be another four card. Twitch blocked your message. Twitch, get the heck out of here. <laughs> Hi, Penguin Lee. Welcome in. 
One more time, Doc. Keep going. Try one more time. All right, there's that fourth card. We're going to go ahead, collect the cards, and we're going to thank them very much for helping us relay the message to Doc here in the chat. Thank you very much, cards. And we're going to keep them here over to the side just in case later we find that Doc would like some clarification. Okay. So we've got the four cards here. All right. One, two, three, four. So we're going to start with over here. We're going to reveal them, kind of get a general reaction, and then we'll go ahead and see where to go from there, okay? So first card here, we've got a reversed death card. Now, I'm pretty sure that everybody's heard of the death card, um, and it's everybody's always scared of it. It actually can be a very, very good card. So we'll see what this has to say, but I'm interested. And of course, it has to be Sailor Saturn. Yes, in reverse. So we'll see. We'll see what that has to say. Oh, well, look at all these. The reversed, the Devil card. So we're getting a lot of major arcana. Whoa! More reverse cards. Man, three in reverse. Yanni Bunny, you were right. This is trying to tell him something. Oh, okay. See. Now we've got an upright nine of swords here at the end. So we've got the seven of pentacles here, and then we've got a, a reverse, and then we've got the nine of swords. Yeah, yeah. The world's trying to tell somebody something. So, <laughs> no, don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. All right. So we're looking at this. these cards. They seem scary. Don't worry. Seriously, don't worry. All right. So we're going to read this death card. I'm very, very excited to see this death card because I don't think I've ever pulled it before, but it always means some good stuff. And it always means like answers you've been looking for. All right. So the general meaning, <laughs> the general meaning for um, death in the uh, reverse. Um, the death reversal meaning is still about change, which is what the death card means in general. It's just that it signifies change. You know, the, the death of one life um, and the rebirth of another. So um, it's still about change, but that you have been resisting it. So it sounds like there's a change that needs to happen in your life that, that maybe you're you're uh not you're you're like no I'm, I'm not cool with that um you could be worried about letting go of the past or you could not be sure of, of the changes that you need to make going forward resisting the change and holding on to the past can limit your future which can cause you to feel like you're in limbo you should take some time to assess the ways that you have been approaching changes in your life you may find that you've been halting changes that you need due to fears of the unknown. While you could still be afraid, you should trust that you are taking the right steps and move forward. Life moves on, so fighting passing time is only going to leave you with regrets. That does not have to be a card of regret, especially if you heed its warning. So it, so that that's giving you some good off, advice right off the bat. Um, I always like the death card because it always gives really good advice. Um, but let's see, let's see. I'm trying to see just in general. Um, so just in general, um, it means fear of change. You fear repeating negative patterns. You resist change. You feel stagnant. Um, that sort of stuff. Okay. We're going to move on here. Yeah, they are really, they're not pulling any punches. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, when you ask the universe things, it's, it's really not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to lie. All right, so we've got the devil card reversed. Um, so the devil card 
See, that's why I like. Apparently, this um, upright is actually more of a negative card. So, like, I'll read the keywords for this um, upright and kind of you can tell what I mean. Um, the upright keywords are oppression, addiction, obsession, dependency, excess, powerlessness, and limitations. That's what it's like upright. So, I mean... Reversed has to be the opposite of that, right? So let's see what this devil reversed has in store for you. All right. The reversed devil meaning, the upside down meaning of the devil card can be the moment when an individual becomes self-aware and breaks all the chains that come with addiction or poor habits. It might be because they are tired of running in circles and are in need of change. But one thing is usually clear, breaking off these chains, especially those of negative habits, are never easy. So one has to be prepared to make the necessary changes that might initially seem painful to make adjustments that will pay off in the end by being able to find your true self again. Self-assessment is called for in this case, and the individual needs to take some time, list all the things that they need to get rid of, and once this has been done, then it will be time for them to embark on the difficult journey of self-improvement. These cards really go hand in hand here. So it sounds like it sounds like you are resisting change and the change that you might be resisting is getting rid of maybe some negative habits in your life, some sort of negativity in your life. Um, and this is kind of telling you how to do that. So that's... These, this is already a really good one. I think it is really rooting. It's coming for you, but it wants the best for you. It really does. It, it's, it's this reading, it, I can tell the universe is just trying to say, hey, I know you've been kind of avoiding things lately, but this is your wake up call to kind of, you know, truck forward to make sure that, you know, you're not just staying in one place. All right, we're going to go to the pentacles next. And I've been kind of um, reading what all of the suits mean. So we've already went over cups and we've already been over swords. But now we're going to go over pentacles. And what I remember pentacles being in general um, is uh, a suit that has to do with um, security, stability, nature, health, and prosperity. Um, which is good. Uh, let's go because it's the seven of pentacles. Let's see what the seven of pentacles reversed is trying to tell you. Okay. So the reversed meaning of the seven of pentacles means that your returns may be scattered for now. It can also mean the rewards of your labor are not as significant as you thought. The advantage of this is that it shows that you know when to stop investing your time, money, and energy into a particular project. You, therefore, need to reevaluate your choices and figure out where you should put your resources. The Seven of Pentacles reversal meaning it could also be applied to relationships and the effort and emotions that you have invested. Hold on, I'm going to get some water. The Seven of Pentacles symbolism often deals with business ventures and investments. However, it also cuts across relationships viewed as investments as well. The effort put into these investments will be time, money, and hard work. So it sounds like in general, let me see here. Um, the keywords for the reverse Seven of Pentacles here can be unfinished work procrastination, low effort, a lack of growth, setbacks, and impatience, lack of reward. So we're, we're seeing a sort of pattern here with one and two and three. Um, we're seeing that they are all kind of connected in a sort of chain 
where it's kind of like, this is where you are currently. And it's warning you that this could, you know, end up not being so good for you in the long run. But now we have to see, because this, this Nine of Swords, I'm interested to see now, because it's the only upright card we have. So if we're looking into the Nine of Swords... The Nine of Swords it is often associated with fear and anxiety about the things that you worry and keep you up at night. Sometimes this card can be associated with trauma, one that might be shameful for you to confide with others about, and all the, psych the psychological responses that come from experiencing that trauma. When we're never released from the entrapment depicted in the Eight of Swords, we escalate into the Nine of Swords, where we are plagued by nightmares. Uh, the suit of swords is one that is concerned with mind, with logic, with intelligence, and with communication. But somehow the nine of swords was caught on the destructive end of the mind. The one, it, um, the one which turns inward on itself multiplies and festers. Questions are plaguing you and you find yourself reciting all the possibilities, all the things that could happen to you. You are haunted by what could be. There is a sense of repetition within this card. That's some event which has troubled you before and one which has managed to either repress or run away from is coming back again. Sharing your grief does at least provide an outlet for your pain and may release you from carrying this burden alone. Is there anyone that you feel comfortable speaking to? In cases where it is less about trauma and more about general anxiety, analyze yourself and think if this feeling that is within your control or if it, there are other factors that contribute to your anxiety. Con con concentrate on the matters which you can control and learn to ask for help. So it sounds like... It sounds like... You have been anxious about being kind of stuck in possibly a, a, a painful cycle um, that maybe was caused by somebody or something in your life. Um, and this is just the universe warning you that, that there is more to you and more to life than what has been thrust upon you, what, what uh, pain life has caused you. Um, it sounds like if you have a support system, that that is really, really good for you and that you should uh, confide in your friends, in your family, in your chosen family, if that's um, who you're kind of embarking on that journey with. But it sounds like you've had a lot of pain in your life. So I'm, it sounds like you had something not so good happen and, and uh, your anxiety is having you hold on to that. And it sounds like these cards are telling you to try your best to self-reflect and to try and break out of that sort of um, that sort of rut you're in, that sort of uh, place where you feel like everything's same, same, everything is this sort of cycle and you don't feel like you can get out. It sounds like the, the um, sort of message that it's sending you is that... Um, you know, uh, confiding in your, your close friends and your support system also in combination with you assessing yourself will help you get out of this cycle and hopefully get you into a more um, forward way of thinking and a more forward way throughout your life. Um, it didn't pull any punches, but I think that this was a, a good message, a, not an easy message to deliver, but a, a good message because I know if, if this were my reading, I would definitely, I know, I know, it can be rough, it can be rough, but do you have any, do you, are you confused on any of these cards? Do any of these kind of like uh, confuse you as to the meaning 
of, of what it was because I absolutely can pull for clarification for you if, um, if that's what you want. Or we could even pull one card further. Mostly the last one, this Nine of Swords. Okay, yeah, for sure. So we'll go ahead and pull maybe one card for that, that, that Nine of Swords here, okay? All right, so here we go. We'll do the same thing, okay? I'll, I'll pull the cards, and you just tell me when to stop, okay? We're asking for clarification for Doc on his Nine of Swords card. And their Nine of Swords card, they would really like to know what that means for them, okay? Oh, okay. See... I'm unsure if you said stop while I was holding this card or if it was the one that was in my hand. Hold on. I'm going to. I have a feeling. It... We'll go with that one. Thank you very much for the clarification cards. All right. So we've got this last card here. That is supposed to be a clarification. Another reversed card, but it's the reversed five of wands. So remember, we already had this card pulled before. We had this pulled for, um, for Maya's reading, but it was upright. So now we get to hear what the reversal meaning is. So the reverse five of wands is the clarification card here. So let's go ahead. And we can go over what wands was again. I believe it's um, passion, willpower, and inspiration. I don't know if this was Maya's or mine. I can't remember. I think it might have been mine. Never mind. <laughs> All right, the five of wands. Okay. So the reversal of the five of wands... In general, the Five of Wands reversed meaning can mean that your natural method of dealing with disagreements is avoiding any kind of conflict by getting away from that place as fast as you can. So, flight. Sometimes this can be regarded as a good thing, but other times it can may lead to a number of issues brewing up within you, for which you will have to address soon. On the other hand, it can also mean that you have worked through your troubles and you do not have more issues to, you do not have any more issues to worry about. So in general, the keywords for this reversed meaning are end of conflict, cooperation, agreements, truce, harmony, peace, and avoiding conflict. So it sounds like this is less of a clarification card for this because like this is seemingly like where you are now. And this is seeming like this is where you're going to end up. So basically, it's it addressed the fact that you might be a little afraid to confront whatever this is, whatever it's trying to tell you about in your general life, and that you have to take steps in order for you to um, not do that to yourself anymore because that is not helping you in the long run because then that in the end it will be if you can self-reflect and make sure that you're not running away from your problems maybe um, or whatever this is trying to tell you then it will end up in the very end if you follow the universe's advice it will be the end of conflict and you will have more of um a piece in your life but maybe in general what this five of wands is saying is that um and and i could be wrong the trauma or whatever um is, is speaking to um avoiding conflict and and running away from your problems might be a result of what happened here so like you wanting to run away any time there's a sign of conflict or any time something gets really hard, that might be kind of an after effect of this. 
if that makes any sense. But it sounds like what the universe is telling you to do is kind of, it sounds like you're stagnant in your life and you're kind of in a place where you um, are plagued by maybe something that happened to you a while back and that is influencing your behavior even today. And that if you can self-reflect and rely on that support system, then you can end up in a place of harmony, in a place of, you know, no conflict, of less conflict, I guess, in general. So if you, if you learn to maybe deal with um, whatever this is pointing to in your life, then the end result will be that you move forward and that you have a peace and sort of harmony in your life. Does that make any sense? I like this little story. <laughs> it's like, here's what we're dealing with, and here's how to fix it. <laughs> but yeah, it looks, look at, oh, all these cards are so pretty. I'm sorry. Um, so do we need any more clarification, Doc? Or do you think that the cards have got have unfortunately given you a sufficient lashing <laughs> do you think the universe is like okay 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 <laughs> okay yeah let me know if you want any more clarification Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that that, because that's what all of this is supposed to be for. It's, it's maybe difficult to hear, but sometimes we need to hear it, you know? Thank you to these cards. But before we put them away, I want to pull, I want to, I want to show these upright to the camera because they're so pretty. So this, uh, the death card that we have here, this um, major arcana death card is Sailor Saturn. And that is wholly appropriate because uh, if anybody's ever watched um, Sailor Moon, they know that Sailor Saturn is the bringer of death, the destroyer of worlds. So that totally makes sense that she ends up being the death card here. Again, if you're wondering where I got these cards from, I did link the account on my Instagram and my uh, Twitter um, if you are interested. And then we have the devil card here, uh, which is wicked slash black lady, which like... It's beautiful. It's so pretty. And that, that definitely makes sense. <laughs> All right. And then I think we've already seen some of Like, I didn't know who Sailor, and, Sailor Iron Mouse is, but apparently she's in a video game. Because I, I thought Iron Mouse, I'm thinking V. Shoujo Iron Mouse. But no, apparently an actual character is canon. I was like, oh, okay. So we're going to thank these cards, Doc. We're going to thank the cards so much for giving us our message that maybe we weren't we weren't necessarily wanting to hear, but we needed to hear it. So thank you very much. Doc is very grateful for the for these um, messages that you had to to give to them, okay? Choo -choo -choo. Can, is that he, they're asking you if you can be nicer next time I'll put that into the intention into the cards is be nicer next time <laughs> all right is there anybody else that was wanting I know that seemed like a scary reading but is anybody else interested in um, seeing what the universe has to say today <gasps> yeah all right so we'll go Taro first and then we'll go Mitski second. So Taro, my lovely. It is your turn. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to give you the same spiel I was giving Doc at the beginning. Go ahead, place yourself in a good neutral state. Kind of, you know, send your intentions. Are we looking for a specific intention? Are we looking for general? Are we looking for some love advice? Are we looking for some career advice or are we looking for some financial advice what do you think general okay 
So go ahead and place your intentions into the universe. The universe will hear you just as it heard Maya and just as it heard Doc. Um, but go ahead and just kind of put those general intentions out there. Just kind of ask the universe that general question you're looking for. And hopefully here the cards will have an answer for you, okay? So give us a really informative reading for Tarl here. I'm going to I'm going to shuffle for a bit cuz these gloves make it so difficult to shuffle. <laughs> Man, we trying our best out here. We really are. <laughs> it's just because it like I'm just these these gloves. These gloves are not having a good time. I'm it's not necessarily the cards cuz the cards are like see the cards slide slid in really nicely there. It's just these silly gloves. All right. A couple more little shuffles here and then we'll go ahead. As we're infusing the cards with Taro's intentions of what they would like to know generally in their life. One more time and then we'll go in, okay? All right. This should be good to go to let us know about Taro's general life here. All right? So just like the other two, we're going to go ahead, go one by one, and you're going to let me know when to stop. Okay? And like the universe, you know, like we were like, oh, we'll do three card readings. Not a single three card reading has happened tonight because the universe is like, no, no, no. I got more to say. So we'll see. How many cards? All right. Let me know when you're ready, my love. Perfect. All right, ready? Here we go. Sort through one by one. Ooh, okay. That was a pretty significant stop. I saw that as soon as I grabbed that card. So here we go, continuing on here. Okay. Stop number two. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why this keeps happening, but the third pull, what did I get? Two cards, and you said stop. Nothing I can do. I swear to God, I'd... <laughs> I, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not doing anything. I, I'm not lying. I swear. All right. So we're going to put these cards over the side. Thank you so much for the initial. See, that's that's what I'm saying. Thank you very much. All right. And so now we have our four cards here. All right. So we'll, we'll turn them over one by one, kind of see what we're working with. So the first one, we have the reversed judgment card here. Um, another major arcana. Pulling a lot of arcana today. 
I swear to God, we're, we keep getting so many reverse cards, and I, I'm just interested about it. So we got the Ace of Swords, which we've gotten already, but this one's reversed. The other, the other time, I believe, the Ace of Swords was um, upright, so we're going to be reading the reversed meaning this time. The reversed King of Swords, which has also come up today, but in vertical form. Whoa, man, you guys, an all reversed card reading. That doesn't mean anything bad. <laughs> you guys are all like, uh oh, no, that you heard you heard some good things about reverse cards sometimes. <laughs> we've got the, the swords in the middle. We've got some pentacles here and we've got the judgment card here. <laughs> Thank you. Haruki, thank you very much. Calm the chat down. Chat's getting a little wild. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're seeing a pattern here, and it's interesting. So I'm excited to see what we've got going on here. But we'll read this Major Arcana card first. I've never seen Judgment before. So it's, it's an interesting card. So as you can see, Judgment is the 20th card, which means it's one before the last major arcana card. <laughs> Poor Doc. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So we're going to read the reverse judgment card here. And we're going to read the general meaning. All right. So the reverse judgment meaning in general, Taro, my love. The reverse judgment card can mean that you doubt or judge yourself too harshly. This could be causing you to miss opportunities that are awaiting you. The lost momentum causes you to fall behind in your plans, which can make it difficult to move forward. This means that you should not be cautious, but you should be moving forward with pride and confidence. Another reading of Judgment Reversal card can push to take time out of your busy routine to reflect upon your life up to this point and what you have learned so far. You are most likely not giving yourself the time and space to fully think about the matter and learn lessons that you need to be able to to progress with awareness. You could also be too critical of your past actions and you are not giving yourself the forgiveness to move forward. The mistakes that we have made in the past are learning tools, so they help us move through life. Focusing too hard on these mistakes can cause us to trip and fall. See, I, like I said, like, it's just, it sounds like you're judging yourself too harshly and it's just giving you a reminder that you're a human being who makes mistakes and instead of making yourself feel bad for those mistakes, look at it less as that and more as an opportunity to learn. Um, but the keywords for this are self-doubt, lack of self-awareness, failure to learn lessons, and self-loathing. So maybe think about that for a minute. Um, we'll move on here to the Ace of Swords reversed, which we've already had, but we've only had upright. So we'll see what this means when it's reversed. Okay, okay. Here we go. Okay, Ace of Swords reversal meaning is getting a reversed ace of swords might mean one's thoughts are confused unsure and very chaotic this isn't a good time for one to make any decisions since they don't have any clarity on what you should be doing meaning that the chances of failure can be pretty high at this time it would be better to prepare yourself and take baby steps work methodically as slowly move towards your goals this would be a good time to lay back and rationally think about your way through each stage rather than acting on impulse since everything appears in a blur and is not very clear at the moment. It might also be a good time to seek advice since things might not be as they seem. So it sounds like what it's saying is um, this could also be a progression of sorts um, where it sounds like you're in a sort of 
way of you don't really take time or breaks for yourself and it's basically telling you to slow down and and just take some baby steps and if needed ask people in your life who are dear to you for for advice uh the reverse the keywords for the reverse ace of swords is confusion miscommunication hostility arguments destruction brutality just in general it sounds like if you're going too fast it it might end up um making unnecessary mistakes whereas if you work methodically and you and you work with intention that it'll turn out way better than if you just impulsively uh, went through it so let's go ahead because we're sticking with swords so let's go ahead and go to the king of swords here the king of swords reversed Okay, this means um, the king of swords in reverse shows tyrannical, abusive, and manipulative habits. It may indicate the misuse of one's mental pro power, drive, and authority. This is an illustration of persuasion of manipulation uh, so as to fulfill selfish desires. The king of swords reversal meaning may also imply that you are showing off your level of intelligence by using big words when discussing ordinary topics. Another interpretation is that you may also be a loose cannon, especially where there are angry outbursts and impulses. I remember where this is from now. This is from my reading. This is from my reading earlier. I don't think it was reversed, though. I think it was upright. Um, the keywords for this are irrational, oppressive, inhumane, controlling, cold, ruthless, dishonest. The keywords are a little rougher than, than what I'm hearing this card to be interpreted by, so don't necessarily take those at face value. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It just sounds like you need to take a minute and slow down. It's the universe's way of saying, if you're going at the pace you're going, you're going to make a lot more mistakes and you're not going to get to your goal as fast as you think you are. All right. And then this final one is pentacles. So we've got the four of pentacles here. But in reverse. All right. The Four of Pentacles. When reversed, the Four of Pentacles veers sharply into negative meanings of the card. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, instead of being protective, you've become greedy. You sus you've succumbed to stinginess. You are haunted by certain fears of poverty, which compels you to be nothing but materialistic. You are incredibly self-protective and defensive in terms of materialistic things, and you are not opening up to trust other people out of fear that they may be taking them away. On the other side, you might actually be spending too much money. You need to make sure you have a proper hold on your actual financial resources. In any case, the card is capable of inducing both positive and negative associations, and you need to be very accountable and considerate if you get four, the Four of Pentacles in a reading. So it just sounds like this whole thing, uh, it sounds like it just the universe is telling you that you are playing fast and loose, and you're just, you're just trucking forward real quick in your life, and that... It would be more beneficial for you to take time for yourself and kind of assess where you are. And, and when you're uh, finally ready to move forward, then you just go very slowly, baby steps, okay? Uh, the keywords for this, see it's funny because the keywords, the keywords for this sound a lot better than the keywords for the King of Swords reverse. So the reversed 
Keywords for the Four of Pentacles are generosity, giving, spending, openness, financial insecurity, reckless spending. So maybe what has been happening is that maybe... Um, at least for this one, it sounds like you're either spending too much money on yourself or other people and that that might not be a good decision for the long term. So it sounds like, hmm, because I'm trying to piece this together in a way because these all make sense together. It's just, I'm trying. Um... To remember, let's go back because I want to know what this Arcana card was again. Because in my head, I'm thinking something different. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, it sounds like maybe you have some tendencies that within yourself that you're ignoring. Uh, not super like self-aware of what's going on um and as and and you're impulsively you know going forward and and you're going forward without uh, a solid thought about what you're doing and your next step it's basically telling you to slow down give yourself some time and just start back up with baby steps and um i guess a facet of that is that um, maybe uh, you're spending too much money um, or your energy into your uh, other people. And maybe that could be something that you could uh, draw back on um, in order to kind of move forward slowly in your life. Um, let me see. I want to, I want to double check. Yeah. So basically, don't judge yourself too harshly. <laughs> Daddy, chill. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. So basically, just um, don't judge yourself too harshly. You know, you are a human being. And that, um, that you can move forward. Um, you should move forward with pride and confidence, but not with impulsivity. Not with, um, uh, not with in a way where you are just like, <laughs> I am baby and don't know how to chill. Um, well, uh, the universe is telling you to chill a little bit and maybe be more thoughtful in your actions and, and don't be too judgmental on yourself because it sounds like maybe you have some um, internal like, like if somebody, if, if somebody made a similar mistake to you, you would be telling them something different than you'd be telling yourself. And, and that's, that's not cool. You know, you're a human being. You know, you deserve as much grace as everybody else. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading the chat. That's why I'm laughing. So uh, does does, uh, does all of this make sense, Taro? Does it does it <laughs> does it um does it kind of uh, address maybe something that you've been wondering? And if any of these cards are confusing to you, you let me know, and I can pull um I can pull another uh, card for uh, clarification. Zaddy. Good. I'm very, very glad that that has addressed something. The universe. I'm, I'm sorry it was so blunt. And I'm sorry that we have. Look at all these reverse cards here. So, I mean, you put me to work. You put me to work. Because I don't think I've read the, this many reverse cards ever. So, thank you for the practice. But the universe needed to tell you to slow down. Not only within yourself, but maybe with your money. Maybe with your money. I'm not one to tell you, but maybe with your money. 
but it looks here <laughs> oops all blunt um it looks like you have people who love you and who care about you a lot um but no 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 put me to work i need to i need to practice um i need to practice uh relaying the universe's messages to people <laughs> all blunts <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like uh, it's not whispering at you to chill. It's it's screaming at you to chill because every single one was like, hey, bro, maybe we should be taking time for ourselves. Maybe we should be, you know, thoughtfully thinking things out before we do them type of thing. So there we go. There we go. Do we think we're good with this? Do we need any more clarification? You're good. I'm so sorry, Taro. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Are we good with these cards, Taro, or do we need any clarification? Okay, perfect, perfect. All right. Well, Taro... I, uh, these cards, even though they screeched at you, they did tell you something important in your life, so I, I think it's important to thank them. Thank you so much, and these beautiful Sailor Moon cards may have told you something that maybe you weren't ready to hear, but you needed to hear it, hmm? We thank them very much, because they are literally doing the universe's work, <laughs> All right, Mitski. You still want a reading? Okay. Here. You're back. You here. Hi, baby. Welcome back. All righty. Oh, sorry. I didn't even see this. Thank you to that Penguin Lee for follow. Thank you so much to Mitski for the follow. And thank you to Haruki for the follow. We really appreciate all your support, guys. I am doing great. Um, my chat, however, might not be doing so great. Uh, they're getting torn a new one. <laughs> uh, the universe is not pulling any punches. And these cards are not being very forgiving. <laughs> but, all right, Mitski. Yeah, we, yeah, we are kind of being bullied by the universe. Um, all right, Mitski, my love. Go ahead. And um, what, what are the intentions today? Are we looking... For a general reading, are we looking for a love reading, a career reading, or maybe a financial reading? General as well? Okay. Okay. So we're going to do a general reading for Mitski here. Okay. Do you want to, you can, you can be bullied by the universe next year if you would like. We can, we can make that happen. But right now we're going to do Mitski. So Mitski, my lovely, I want you to you know, take a minute, center yourself, and just kind of put your intentions out into the universe. And as I'm shuffling here, that's what we're doing is we're kind of putting those intentions, you know, into the cards so they can tell you exactly what you need to know. Okay. Okay. Please, universe, please, cards, tell Mitsuki what they've been looking to um, get answers for. And I can ask you to be nice, but can't guarantee that, that you're going to be nice about it. Okay. 
All right. So we're going to keep going. Mitski would like to know what you have to say to them in their general intentions and their life going forward. I'm going to do one more here. My mood music went away. <laughs> and I, I think I know why. Is they've been trapped in their box for like, maybe like two months. I, th I think they might be a little stir crazy. Cards do be spilling the tea. One more time. Let's see what kind of tea we're looking at. Because it's been piping hot. Maybe we'll get some iced tea. They really said, they really said, free us. All right. So now that we've shuffled it, give me one second. Turn the music back on because I felt like I felt like the background music lessens the blow maybe a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. All right, Mitski, my lovely. We're gonna go ahead and like I just did with Taro and Doc and Maya, we're gonna go one by one and you're gonna tell me when to stop on a card and like we've seen, the universe has um, plans on whether you are how many cards you're gonna end up using today so are you ready here my lovely what do you think Mitski all right here we go one by one here you tell me when to stop okay done <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> is that stop <laughs> all right hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on we're gonna start again <laughs> all right i'm putting all the cards back where they were and we'll start one more time here all right I was like, what does done mean? Am I confused? <laughs> what done? What does done? <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll go one by one here. I got that one and we'll keep going third pull or possibly a fourth after this.
Okay. It looks like it might be a three card pull for you, but of course, you know, after we uh, have read all the cards, if you decide that, you know, you need clarification on anything, that's absolutely something we can do. All right. All right. Well, maybe the universe has less to tell Mitski than it had the three other people before. Or maybe what it has to tell Mitski is uh, is a little as is a little brief. So we'll see. All right. So we've got three cards here. All right. We've got three cards here. We'll go here one by one. So we've got a six of wands that's upright. A king of cups, which is upright. And the devil, which is upright. So we have three different sort of suits here. And hold on. My mic is blocking things. All right, so we have these three here. You might need clarification later, but we're going to start with these. I like the starfighter here. Um, like <laughs> it's funny because this one, this one, I, I, like, I like that one a lot. Okay, let's see. So we're going to start with this six of wands. So this six of wands upright. Okay. This particular card is all about public recognition, victory, and success. Not only have you managed to properly succeed in, in achieving all of your goals, but you are also being publicly acknowledged for them and the result you've managed to obtain. You may have received an award or some sort of public acclaim. The card is indicative that you have managed to harness the strengths and talents that you have within you in an attempt to bring a particularly successful outcome in your life. You have managed to properly get through the confusion which has brought uh, by the card before this one, the Five of Wands, and manage to properly minimize distractions, thus successfully focusing on your goals and achieving them. It's also worth noting that there is a slight downside apart from the overall positivity that stems from the card. It can bring self-importance as well as egotistical behavior and arrogance. This could make you think that nobody is better than you. So the keywords for this card are meaning success, victory, triumph, rewards, recognition, praise, acclaim, and pride. So good things so far starting out here, but it is really kind of telling you that, um, you know, if um, at the end of achieving your goals and public recognition, you need to be aware of that other side where you can become um, ungrounded so to speak so I guess having people around you to keep you grounded and to keep you more um, in tune with yourself and your environment is important all right the king of cups so we'll go ahead and read that one next <laughs> Okay. All right. The King of Cups is one of the most influential cards in the suit of cups. Yeah, that's why that's why I was like I really like Seiya in this card. Um, the King of Cups is one of the most influential cards in the suit of cups. He represents creativity, emotion, and the unconscious. The card shows the ability to restrain one's emotions and be fully in charge of your feelings and impulses. Therefore, the King of Cups represents a balance between intellect and emotions. 
It indicates that there is a strong relationship between understanding and feeling. When you have balanced your emotions and are able to control them, it means you have a deeper knowledge and awareness of yourself. When you are faced with challenges that normally throw you off balance, the King of Cups is there to remind you you should act as it does. Do not fly into a rage or immediately throw yourself into despair. You're, you first need to temper the state of your emotions so that you can progress forward in reality. Learn to evaluate yourself so as to determine how to, you can create a stronger awareness of your internal state. There are instances when the King of Cups can sing, symbolize an older male who is in your life. This is a mature male who is willing to take responsibility for his actions and have mastered his own self-understanding. The King of Cups tends to be political and diplomatic, and this makes it possible for him to balance the needs of others and enhance the harmony among all parties involved. The King of Cups shows that you are sensitive as a leader and you are, caref and you are careful in the way the others respond to your emotional needs. The King of Cups implies that you should remain mature when dealing with negative energy. Well, that's, it. that's important advice. Um, the keywords for this are wise, diplomatic, balance between head and heart, devoted, advisor, counselor. So, um, I am still taking readings, Kawaii Senpai. Hi, Hannah, my love. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're here. Hannah, Hannah, you could be added to the list. Was there somebody else? Um, who, um, I wasn't, I, I, I'm not sure if there was somebody else after, okay, so we've got the sheer next, and then we will get to Hana, that'll, that'll be cool, hi, my love, yeah, perfect, awesome, so this, so this center card here, the reason I was drawn to it so much is, I feel like, for some reason, this card might represent a person whether that's you Mitski, or somebody in your life um if no if people don't know Seiya is um in sailor moon um actually quote like like it's uh, sorry uh sailor moon was pretty revolutionary for its time not only having the lesbian couple in it but also um the last season they actually had they touched upon like non-binary and and transgender um as a concept so seiya is one of the kind of i would say like gender fluid or non-binary so uh for some reason that's telling me the universe is telling me to tell you that so hopefully that means something to you mitski but and then we have this last card so we need to make sure that we we read that before we finish up this here and then I will ask if you have any further questions for the universe, if it's not clear. All right. So it sounds like these cards in general are pretty positive. What are those emotes? They're cute as heck. Sorry, I, just, I got distracted. All right. So um, the upright meaning of the devil card. Um, is getting the devil card in your reading shows that you have feelings of entrapment, emptiness, and lack of fulfillment in your life. I also mean that you are a slave to materialism and opulence, no matter how hard you try. You just can't seem to shake the feeling of wanting to, indul to indulge in luxurious living. You might be aware of this kind of lifestyle as leading you down a rabbit hole, but you have that feeling of not having any form of control over your actions and urges. Addiction to substances or material pleasures can also be the reason for your feelings of powerlessness and entrapment. In situations such as these, you may feel as though you are a slave, 
unable to control your impulses or willpower to direct yourself towards something other than satisfaction of your desires. So it sounds like these first two cards are pretty positive. It's kind of, see, I, we asked the universe to be nice. We really did. And, and it did. It's one of, it's using one of those things where it's like you say something nice to somebody. So it like softens the blow of maybe something not so nice at the end. So the cards did listen when we asked them to be a little nicer. And, and they chose Mitski's reading to do it. Um, but basically it sounds like you're pretty successful and you're pretty like, you know, secure in, in what you're doing, but just beware of the devil card. Beware that, you know, you could have some impulsive spending or you could be a slave to, um, certain material possessions and you feel like you have no control of that maybe just this is a warning that you need to address that and maybe um you know take that into account the keywords for this are oppression addiction obsession dependency excess powerlessness and limitations so i'm seeing seeing pretty good things do it are we um here before i ask if we want clarification so it looks like this first one it's saying that if you're going to put your mind to something, to your goals, to your aspirations, and you're going to get, you know, public recognition for them, you're going to get an award, some sort of good, positive things coming from meeting your goals. But you need to also be aware of the fact that it could give you a, a bigger head, so to speak, or could bring you um, further away from the people that you love. So that's just a warning that good things also might have a little small downside that you just need to be aware of. Um, and then... Sorry, I want, I want to look back and make sure I'm giving accurate stuff. Okay. And so basically... Um, Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I see what this is saying. So basically, um, you're going to succeed and you're going to find great success in achieving your goals so much so that you might get public recognition or some sort of award for them. Um, but you're having that warning of, you know, staying grounded. Um, and I feel like to stay grounded you need to be able to balance your head and your heart because that's what this is. So make sure that you have control over, you know, your thoughts as well as your emotions and it should help you hopefully stay grounded throughout this sort of process. But the cards are also warning you that maybe you're, you know, obsessed with something. Maybe you're a slave to some materialistic things. It's telling you to watch out for that. Because that could be a negative facet going on in your life that could um, wreak havoc later down the line. Um, all in all, though, uh, definitely a more positive reading than than uh, than the other ones we've seen today. So the cards were pretty nice to you. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, Mitski, do, do we have any questions? Are any of these cards, like, you're like, ooh, I would like some to expound on that. You let me know um, what you think. Yeah, I'm nervous about... Uh, Okay, which card do you think wants to what that you want to expand a little bit on and we'll ask about it. So, which one's confusing to you? The 6 of wands, the king of cups or the devil card? Oh, 
Okay, so for the King of Cups. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing again, but just for a single single card pull, okay? So you tell me when the single the single card that you see um, comes, you know, into frame, and you just tell me when to stop, okay? Okay. okay, so the universe wants to give you two cards to expound upon. So not just one. So apparently you needed a, a lot more um, clarification. All right, so we're going to push these up here a little bit. And then we're using these two for the middle cards, okay? Whew. All right. So the first card for clarification is the temperance card, but the temperance card is reversed. But also we have the Knight of Wands, which has come up already because I remember Queen Beryl coming up. So the Knight of Wands and temperance reversed. Let's see what these cards have to say and if it explains anything further for you. Mitski, let's see, temperance, temperance. Okay. All right, so in general, temperance in reversed is a reflection of something that is out of balance and may be causing stress and anxiety. The real meaning of temperance, the temperance card, can be deciphered using the other cards in the spread to identify areas in where this imbalance is being caused. A temperance in reversal may also be used as a warning. If you take a certain path, it would lead to turbulence and excess. Lack of long-term plan and vision may also be the temperance reversal meaning. This creates a lack of purpose for you, leaving you lopsided as you search here and there for what you should be doing. You must reflect and think carefully on what needs to change. Temperance reminds us that all things are good in moderation, and we must examine in which aspects of our life we are breaking the balance. So I'm seeing a lot of balance here, because that's what, that's what this is, and that's what this is, is like lots of balance. So sounds like something or that the universe is telling you you need to be more balanced. So the keywords for the temperance reversed are imbalance, excess, extremes, discord, recklessness, and hastiness. So that's what that means. And then we'll go ahead and see what this Knight of Wands is trying to tell us. I wonder. Because, like, it said, look at the other card, so maybe this is the other card it's talking about. Okay. The Knight of Wands, upright, symbolism is straightforward. When it appears... It means it's a great time to get away and travel. Uh, this person should feel charged up and full of life, one that is ready to get things done. Um, they are adventurous and can find fun things to do no matter where they are. There's never a dull moment when the Knight of Wands is around. And when the Knight of Wands shows up in a reading, it may suggest that the seeker wants to complete important tasks. One wants to impress others with one's knowledge and skill. The card, also, the card also shows up when the person is planning to move to another place of residence. If you are starting a creative project, then you should do so with lots of energy and enthusiasm. However, you should balance it, there's that word again, with realistic and well-rounded views. You should also have a plan that takes into account the consequences of your actions. Getting the Knight of Wands in a reading can also mean that there is an event that you don't expect to happen soon. If it is accompanied by the Eight of Wands, which it is not, it's accompanied by the Six of Wands. Ooh, we're getting close there. 
um, then you should expect lots of changes in your life. So it doesn't sound like there are going to be lots of changes, but it sounds like changes nonetheless. More often than not, the Knight of Wands indicate, indicates a hasty change of job, residence, or anything in your life. So I think I remember where this is from. I think this is from my reading at the very beginning. I was trying to remember where I saw this. Um, the keywords for this are courageous, energetic, charming, hero, rebellious, hot-tempered, free spirit. So, hmm. I keep hearing the word balance in this reading. I feel like that's important. I feel like that's pretty important in what the universe is trying to tell you. It sounds like maybe something going on in your life. Okay. Sounds good, Sheer. You have a good night. It's okay. You can come come we'll do we'll do more of these, don't worry. So, if you want to come back next time, I'll you'll be first. How about? Okay? You go get some sleep and uh and the cards will wait for you. All right. So it sounds like there's imbalance in your life and it's saying to you that you need to find some balance in your life, whether that's between your emotions and your intellect or whether that's in your financial um, means. It sounds like that you shouldn't be going doing too much and you shouldn't be doing too little. It seems like you have to create some sort of middle ground in your life. Um, I'm going to go back to that temperance card really quick because I want to double check. Okay. So the... Yeah, so... I mean, the first sentence of this is is that that something's out of balance and it's causing you stress. Um, so it sounds like with the other cards, the balance could be maybe that you're spending too much on material possessions and you don't feel like you can control that. Or it seems like it could be your um that you could be starting to fall um into that sort of um you know uh having your head get too big sort of thing or it could refer to this king of cups one as well but just be aware that you need to have, basically temperance is telling you in reverse that you need to make sure that you're planning out and, and um, having a long-term plan for um, what you're seeking in your life. Whether that's your goals, whether that's what you want in terms of, you know, um, being fulfilled, it's completely in your hands, but it's basically it seems like it's saying there are some good things in your life and if you want that to continue you're gonna heed these warnings that the universe is trying to to give to you does that make any sense Mitski or do we or do you want me to read over some of these meanings again because I'm fully willing to do that oh perfect okay I'm gonna I'm gonna, okay so first before we go Look at this beautiful Sailor Mercury card. It's so pretty. Of course she's temperance though. She totally she totally makes sense in being temperance. All right. Thank you card so much. Mitski really appreciates your insight. And we thank you very much for delivering the messages from the universe. Yeah, they were they were kind to you, Mitski. They were really kind to you. There was there was no death cards. There was there was only hey, maybe we shouldn't be spending so much money <laughs> or something like that. 
All right. All right, Hana, are you ready? Awesome. All right, so um, just like the other readings, my love, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. See, as I, I want to tell you, don't be nervous because the cards can sense when you're nervous. <laughs> uh, don't be nervous. It's the universe is is gonna has got stuff to tell you, and you know, all you have to do is sit with the information. You decide whether you want to take it it or not wow. all right so what i want you to do hana is kind of um what what sort of intention are we looking for today are we going general are we going love are we going finances are we going career what do we think in general okay another general reading today cards hana would like to know answers in general about her life if you could give her a general insight that'd be fabulous hana i want you to go ahead i want you to get in a centered state i want you to put your intention out into the universe i want you to ask the questions that you want to ask and hopefully these cards will be able to reveal to you those answers you're looking for, okay? Um, also, Yanni Bunny, did you wanna, did you wanna go next? Did you wanna do that? All right, let's go ahead. Give Hana the answer she's looking for, okay? Okay. I'm gonna do a couple more times. We're gonna fuse the intentions that we've got here. One more time. We'll do one more for good measure. gloves aren't helpful in the slightest. All right, here we are. Okay, Hana, like I've been saying to everybody, I know you may not have heard, but way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do one by one. We're gonna go ahead and, and go one by one. And then I want you to tell me to stop in the chat and I'll put that card aside. Now, just like you saw with Mitski, there was three cards and we asked for clarification. Um, but also there's been four cards drawn today. So it's really the universe's, um, it's the universe's prerogative. So, ready, Hannah? You tell me when to stop, okay? Oop, I got the stop on this last one. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, this one. Okay, keep going here. Oh, <laughs> here we go again. 
This is another two cards. Yep. So we got another four cards here. All right. So we are going to thank the cards very much for sending us the message. And we're going to put them over to the side. It, it happened once already. But like I said, that's the universe saying that, you know, if you're saying stop and it was two cards, then it's two cards. All right. So we got the four cards here. Let's go ahead, turn them over one by one. So we've got the sun card, which I remember came out earlier. Um, we also have the magician card. We're having a lot of arcana cards with you, Hannah. Hannah. And then the king of pentacles. So another um, sailor star. And then... Oh, look, Saya's back with the King of Cups. So we've got a lot of cool cards here, Hana. So I'm excited to see how these sort of intertwine with them and how it speaks to you, okay? So here we go. Struggle bus. All right, so we're going to start with the sun which is always a really good card to start with because the sun card is just, in general, a really, a really positive card. Okay, this, uh, the sun in the upright uh, represents success, abundance, and radiance. Like the sun itself, it gives strength and vitality to all those who are lucky enough to feel its rays. There is much joy and happiness that is coming to you. Because of your own personal fulfillment, you provide others with inspiration and joy as well. People are drawn to you because they're capable of seeing the warm, beautiful energy you bring into their lives. You are also in a position in which you are capable of sharing your qualities as well as achievements with other people. You radiate love and affection towards those you care about the most. The card shows that you have a significant sense of deserved confidence right now. Life is currently particularly good and the sun is shining your way as you reach your goals that you set. The sun is one of the cards in which the tarot, which provides nothing but good feeling and fulfillment. So this is a positive card. This is a good one so far. The key words um, for the upright are happiness, success, optimism, vitality, joy, confidence, happiness, and truth. So... All, all good things, all good things with this sun card, okay? Uh, let's see about the magician. So the magician is the first of the major arcana. And I don't think I've ever read this card before. I'm excited to see what this means. All right. All right. The magician is the representation of pure willpower. With the power of the elements and the suits... She takes the potential innate in the fool and molds it into being the power of desire. She is the connecting force between heaven and earth, for she understands the meaning behind the words, as above, so below, that mind and world are only reflections of one another. Remember that you are powerful. Create your inner world and the outer will follow. When you get the magician, in your reading, it might mean that it's time to tap into your full potential without hesitation. It might be in a new job, a new business venture, a new love, or something else. It shows that it's time to take action is now, and any signs holding back would be missing the opportunity of becoming the best version of yourself. Certain choices will have to be made, and those can bring great changes to come. Harness some of the magician's power to make the world what you desire the most. Another good card, Hana. So, nothing to be nervous about, it seems, so far. The key words of these are willpower, desire, being resourceful, skill, ability, concentration, and manifestation. Okay, just keep that in mind for that. And then the king of pentacles here. 
See, what I recall is pentacles being money related, like good for finances, but we'll see. All right. When we meet the king of pentacles, we feel immediately his regal and generous presence. He is a provider and a protector, for under his care is a flourishing and abundant kingdom where its citizens are prosperous and encouraged to grow. He is naturally responsible and reliable through the wisdom granted to him by his suit. He, is, he has grown all that has acquired from practically nothing. To see him in the cards is to envision success, one that is won by earnest work. Generally, this card reminds us to stay in control of our energy and our resources in pursuit of the larger goal. When it comes to work, the King of Pentacles may refer to a more established man who will play a significant role in your career. This man can be wise and rational, or he might also be careless when passing, but he might also be careless when passing judgment. He can be your biggest supporter, but be prepared to receive unsolicited and harsh criticism. In love, this can indicate the person that you've been waiting for to come along and will love you for who you are. With regards to finances, the King of Pentacles is one of the best cards to receive. This may mean your financial situation is stable as a result of your wise investments and hard work. In case you are taking a gamble, be sure to initiate a calculated action. So, good things for this one as well, Hannah. The key words on this being abundance, prosperity, security, ambitious, safe, kind, patriarchal, protective, provider, sensual, reliable. Good things, good things. And then the King of Cups here for the last one. All right. The King of Cups is one of the most influential cards in the suit of cups. It's responsible for creativity, emotion, and the unconscious. The card shows the ability to restrain one's emotions and be fully in charge of your feelings and impulses. Therefore, the King of Cups represents a balance between intellect and emotions. He indicates that there is a strong relationship between understanding and feeling. When you have balanced your emotions and are able to control them, it means you have a deeper knowledge and awareness of yourself. When you are faced with challenges that would normally throw you off balance, the King of Cards is here to remind you that you should act as he does. Do not fly out into a rage or immediately throw yourself into despair. You first need to temper the state of your emotions so that you can progress forward in reality. Learn to evaluate yourself so as to determine how you can create a stronger awareness of your internal state. There are instances of when the King of Cups can symbolize an older male who is in your life. This is a mature man who is willing to take responsibility for his actions and has mastered his own self-understanding. The King of Cups tends to be political and diplomatic, and this makes it possible for him to balance the needs of others and enhance the harmony amongst all parties involved. The King of cups shows you that you're sensitive as a leader and you're careful in the way that you respond to others and to the respond to your emotional needs uh, the way others respond to your emotional needs apologize the king of cups implies that you should remain mature when dealing with negative energy so it sounds like it sounds like you need to kind of <laughs> um, we kind of um, you need to look in um, inward to yourself and make sure that you are taking care of the in the you on the inside and the outside will then follow um, negative energy you need to learn how to handle that um, it's not easy, uh, way easier said than done, of course, but 
once that happens, it seems like there are great things for you in all aspects of your life. So your life in general. Um, uh, that That is what this card is pointing to, is that um, all of these things in your life can be possible as long as you balance um, you know, your emotions and you learn how to um, sort of um, be more in tune with yourself, if that makes any sense. All right. Very good cards. This is a... <laughs> um, but it sounds like you have somebody in your, in your life who is very loving toward you. I heard that a couple of times, specifically with these cards in general. It sounds like this one might be somebody who maybe is your partner in life or somebody who you're very close to um, and that um, you need to uh, keep that relationship. Um, it's, it sounds like that you've never had something like this and that um, you're finally getting the support you need. So that, partner's, uh, that partner or that close intimate person is going to be very important in your life going forward, possibly even um, helping you uh, balance your emotions, you know, so maybe talk with them about how, you know, you're dealing in your life and how they can properly help you going forward. But yeah, it sounds like some internal soul searching going on, but all I'm saying is this energy looks great as long as we make sure that, that we aren't being impulsive with our emotions and that you're making sure that um, that they don't get out of hand and that you will then have abundance in your life and pretty much everything that you're searching for as long as you're putting your mind to it. Does that sound? How's that sound? I mean, it sounds good to me, but... <laughs> All right. Hannah says, thank you very much. Doesn't sound like there's any clarification needed and that really got the message that she was searching for so thank you so much cards this uh, i want to since i obsessed about the sailor mercury card look at the sailor venus card y'all so pretty it's so pretty all right was there anybody else who wanted um to ask the cards anything tonight are we are we wanting Anybody else want to to um, give the cards a little peek or ask the cards any questions that they are dying to know? Oh, no, what? Oh, it's your turn? Yeah, for sure, baby. If that's what you're looking for. All right. Are we going to finish up with Yanni Bunny? <laughs> you don't like your first one, Taro? <laughs> You're like, but they're so much nicer now. <laughs> um, I mean, sure. If we have enough time here at the end. See, exactly. That's what I was reaching for. I was reaching for my water. Absolutely, Taro, baby. If... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll have... <laughs> we'll have Yanni Bonnie go next. We'll, we'll have her answer her questions. And then at the end here, if we have any time, we can do a quick little re-roll, quote-unquote, for Taro. But instead of... <clears throat> I believe we, we did a general reading. We can do that specific relationship reading for you specifically, okay? Does that sound good? And then, um, Doc, we might have to wait until next time for you for your second reading, if that's okay. All right, so, Yanni Bunny, my lovely, it is your time. So what we're going to do is I want you to center yourself. 
I want you to put your intentions out there. Are we going for general? Are we going for love and relationships, career, finances? We're going for love today. Okay, okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to sit with yourself and I want you to put those intentions, those questions you have out into the world, out into the universe, and hopefully those answers will be reflected in the cards, okay? <laughs> Good, I'm got I mean, we all need a simp every now and again. So no, no shame in being a simp. Somebody tells you that they're wrong. Okay. She said be nice. Can you be nice? Yanni Bunny would like you to be nice. A couple more. Perfect. Love to hear it. We, we love, we love it. We love to hear intentions have been set. One more, and then we'll be good. All right, here we go. All right, now the deck has been infused with Yanni Bunny's intentions. Um, and just like always, Yanni Bunny, as, I, as I'm going, putting the cards down one by one or two, depending on what, you know, my hand decides to do, you just tell me when to stop, and I'll put that card aside. And we and we don't know how many cards we're gonna get because the universe has said three, four, five. We don't know. Okay, baby, ready? You tell me when to stop. <laughs> All right, just as you said stop, that card was in my hand. Okay, so I've got that card, and then let's do one more. Hmm? One more pull. You tell me when to stop. Okay. So it looks like a three-card pull for Yanni Bunny right now. And you remember, Mitski got the same thing and asked for clarification. So that is absolutely something that can be done. But we thank the cards very much for their initial message. And we await what we've got here. So we've got three cards. I mean, you asked them to be nice to you. So hold on a moment. Sorry, was aeroplane. It didn't want me to finish. All right. You asked it to be nice, so maybe this is nice. 
we will see but we'll let's let's flip over the cards and i want to remind everybody reverse doesn't always mean negative it could be positive sorry where i live they have a lot of aircrafts and they happen to be nearby my house right now and i don't know why all right the world Ooh, this one's a good card okay we'll see we'll see all right so we've got the world first the page of swords second and then this last one that you said is giving you vibes. Ooh, temperance. We've seen temperance before. Zawurd. Exactly. All right. So let's go ahead and start out this reading. But for, so far, it looks like the cards were pretty nice to you. So go going. All right, and you see that the world is the 21st Major Arcana card, which um, I've gotten the world in a reading before, and it always meant really good things. All right, here we go, Yanni Bunny. So really quick, I'm just going to give the keywords for the general meaning of the upright world. So the general keywords of this are completion, achievement, fulfillment, sense of belonging, wholeness, and harmony. So good things. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing at the, the JoJo reference. That was good. The <laughs> Kono Dioda. Um, all right. So, the love meaning for world um, means is your relationship gives you a sense of deep fulfillment and gratitude right now. The world tarot love meaning signals a feeling of completion and happiness. At times, this card can even suggest moving to the next step of your relationship, such as marriage or starting a family. As you complete one cycle in your life, you are looking towards steps uh, the future into the next steps you and your partner may be making plans perhaps even big decisions and then also even when single there's a sense of fulfillment and happiness here before getting into a relationship one must feel like a whole person while a relationship may be nice you are confident on your own you have this sense of wholeness and self-understanding right now, giving you great opportunity to meet new and exciting people, as well as charm and magnetism. So, good things are ready to start. Is that a Michi people? <laughs> I mean, that's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and and get this uh, Page of Swords one next. Good, I'm glad you're giggling a little. That means good things. That means you should continue. If you're on a good path right now and you feel good about the way you're going, it's telling you, it's confirming that you should continue going that way, that it's, it's, a, good, it's a good place in which you're going. All right, the Page of Swords. Um, in general, the keywords for Page of Swords, curious, witty, chatty, communicative, inspired, vigilant, alert, and mental agility. And then the love meaning for the Page of Swords. As a person, the Page of Swords tarot love meaning reflects a curious intellectual whose flighty nervous energy may border on anxious. In relationships, however, they may be scared of emotional confrontations and can be, lightly, can be likely to be completely avoidant if they are faced with them. As an, as an emotional state or quality, the Page of Swords love meaning can signal a relationship that is more cerebral, where lover, lovers are more likely to love heady com discussions but are perhaps a bit more wary of emotional intimacy. 
One partner can feel that their emotional needs are not being met. Sometimes it can also signal small or petty disputes with your partner, which can turn into bigger conflicts should they not be handled properly. Um, so it sounds like um, either while you're in a relationship or if you as a person, if you avoid your emotions or you avoid how your emotions play into a conversation <laughs> you uh into a conversation oh bye hana <laughs> you're very welcome i'm glad you enjoyed your reading love you very much have a good night okay um this can mean like you you could be like an anxious sort of person who maybe likes to think more um, about intellectualizing your feelings rather than feeling the feelings. And I, I know this too well personally because I have that problem sometimes. So this card is just kind of pointing that out and saying that it could be an obstacle in your pursuit of love. Um, so uh, kind of just... Take that into account and try your hardest to have that be less of a problem going forward. And then we're going to finish with the temperance card, which you had. You said you had a, a interesting feeling about, which sometimes if people have those feelings, it could mean that this card represents um, you or a person that you know in your life. That could be what that means, but uh, like I said, I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and read what temperance means upright here. So the key words in general is balance, peace, patience, moderation, calm, tranquility, harmony, serenity. Pretty good. All right. And the love meaning in general. In romance, the upright uh, temperance tarot love meaning suggests patience, moderation, understanding, and going the middle path. This card indicates that we must avoid going to extremes to be cautious and thoughtful of our actions. Consider your actions when it comes to love and in aspects of your attitude, beliefs, or thoughts can be excessive. Are you too pushy with potential partners or instead are you too reserved? Are you too giving or are you not giving enough? How can we bring these traits into balance? In addition, your relationship or potential relationships may require patience right now and attempt to work together to find a compromise and harmony. So, I mean, these are all good things. It's saying that you're, you're in a good place right now. And that there may be like little sort of things within yourself or things within your relationship that could be difficult. It's just you needing to be patient and you may be needing a little bit of self-reflection and seeing how you can put your sort of behavior into balance. Um, But yeah, patience and being possibly maybe more reserved than, than your counterpart, um, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> it's not wrong, but it's, it's not being mean to you either. It sounds like it's telling you something that you already know. Um, but with the appearance of this world card, it, it means good things. Yanni Bunny. It is, it's been very gentle. Yeah. Um, the cards earlier had no chill. <laughs> no chill. Um, and then um, it's just sounding like you could be an anxious being that doesn't really want to delve into their emotions too much and would like to avoid those certain conversations. But maybe we need to be patient with ourselves and with our partners if we have one. Um in this sort of transitionary period and then we can continue having this sort of prosperous outlook 
on um, on your love um, and romantic life. Um, do we feel like we understand what the universe and the cards are trying to tell us, or did we want a clarification on any one of these cards? Do we have any confusion? Because it's okay. We can be confused and ask the universe, what do we mean by that? Yeah, the temperance card for sure. All right. So we'll do one clarification on the temperance card. We'll do the same thing, okay? So I'm going to go one by one and you're going to tell me when to stop, okay? Okay, so I'll take this top card that I touched when you said stop. Thank you very much for the clarification cards. All right, so let's see what this clarification card has in store for us. So it is a reverse eight of pentacles. I don't know at the top of my head what exactly that's meaning for the clarification here, but you know what? We'll get to the meaning here in a moment. <gasps> Michi! Oh, thank you so much! <laughs> thank you! Hi! Welcome in! Thank you guys so much! <laughs> I appreciate it! Oh, thank you! Michi, you're such a freaking saint! How is your gaming? I I am. There the cards have been interesting today. <laughs> they are. They are Sailor Moon tarot cards. They are and we have been having a time with them. We are in the middle of Yanni Bunny and her um um <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. They are they're gorgeous. I um I did um do uh I did post on my Twitter and my Instagram if you guys are looking for who made the cards. Um but they are very cute. They're very cute. Um so <laughs> I'm I'm actually I'm I'm very very I'm I'm a loss for words. I really appreciate it, Michi. <laughs> it's very it's very nice of you for the raid. Um how, how did gaming go today? Did it go well? What game did we play? I am not quite sure. I can't see. I just see Mitchy Raid, Mitchy Raid. <laughs> um, but I have, while I'm looking for that answer, oh, it's really nice to meet you too. Thank you so much, Topo God. I really appreciate you uh, following. There are definitely a couple of new followers here, and I really appreciate it. Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I hope that went well for y'all. <laughs> Mitchy Raid, Mitchy Raid. <laughs> yes, we love it when we have a Mitchy Raid. All right. Sorry, we're getting we're getting off track. We're getting off track. Um, so we have this Eight of Pentacles reversed cuz cuz Yanni Bunny wanted to know what exactly this was and why and why that showed up. Yeah, tarot cards. We're doing a we're doing a hand cam stream. I appreciate you all coming to join us. I really appreciate the raid. Michi is so nice. Um, all right. So we've got the eight of pentacles reversed here. I know. Ooh. I do not have persona tarot cards, but I bet they make persona tarot cards somewhere. Um, let's see what we got. So, so the clarification, Yanni Bunny here. Um, so we have a reversed Eight of Pentacles and what that is saying to us in terms of your love life. You can't cut any corners or take any shortcuts when it comes to love. The reversed Eight of Pentacles tarot love meaning is a reminder that the effort we put into our relationships and our love life matters. We can either devote ourselves to them 
and patiently watch it flourish under our care or we can take it for granted and let it eventually die. This means that your relationship or romantic life may require a lot from you right now and it may be that your partner may need you to step up. Have you been doing your part? Have you been expressing your affection? Have you shown your love as much as you have been accepting love? Try and make sure both of your needs are being met. Michi Michi! Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of that. I'm so... <laughs> I'm so appreciative. So, Yanni Bunny, did that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Do you think that clarified anything for you, my lovely? Good. Okay, okay. Do we need more clarification here? Or do we feel like the universe has, has sent its message across to you? Oh my goodness gracious. Topple God, please. I appreciate it. Go to bed. <laughs> I'm very I'm very happy that you've decided to join. I think it's Okay, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take these cards and we're going to say thank you, thank you so much for the messages that it sent. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming in. I appreciate it. Michi, Michi is a huge supporter of mine, and I'm a huge supporter of hers. She does, she does amazing VTuber work. Good night, my lovely. I, I really hope to see you back at some point. Tapo God, have a good night, okay? Thank you, cards and the universe. Woo! All right. I know we have some new people in here. Um... Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, she's a cutie. I'm excited to be able, if if I end up liking uh, streaming as much as I, I'm liking it currently, hopefully I'll be able to get a big girl model that'll be able to um, do all sorts of different things. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, I know that I remember that Taro wanted to do a love reading. Did you want to do a quick love reading, Taro? And then, and then maybe you will, will be done. Fingers crossed, exactly. Fingers crossed. Because I think she would make a beautiful VTuber model. All right. Taro. All right. Here we go. All right. Taro would like to know... <laughs> Taro would like to know more about their love life, about what it's looking like. So Taro, my lovely, set your intentions into the universe and we'll let the cards do the talking, okay? Do a couple more shuffles here. Do a quick little love reading for Taro. <laughs> All right. Do one more. And then for everybody here, the way that I've been doing it, and Taro's are already had a, a, a reading earlier, but I'm going to explain it. Perfect. I'm going to explain it really quick just for everybody who just came in. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through these cards one by one. And Taro is going to tell me when to stop. And we're going to separate that card aside. And that is going to be the universe's answer to the question that they're seeking. So here we go. Taro is ready when I am, so I'm going to start. Here we go. Oh, that was pretty quick. All right, and then we keep going here. Oh, all right, that one. And then we'll go for one more. Uh, 
I am reading Taro's um, Romance and Love Life coming up. So with this last stop, it'll give us our full three card reading. Maybe four cards, we'll have to see. Oh, all right. So we only have three cards. So the universe wasn't like, I need to give a bunch of information. So we thank these cards very much. We tell them, thank you for the answers. And we may need some clarification later. All right. So three cards here. One, two, and three. All right. And we're going to, exactly. We love to see concise. So we're going to reveal the cards here. So we've got an eight of cups, which I believe we've seen in a reading today. We're getting a lot of similar energy. We've got a reversed four of pentacles. And then we have the knight of swords. So we've got some new cards. We've got some cards we've already seen. So let's go ahead and see what the universe is trying to tell us here in terms of Taro's love life and romance. So we're going to start with cups and I'm going to reiterate um, that the suit of cups itself rules over emotions, the unconscious, creativity, and intuition. So just keep that in mind. All right. So with the eight of cups, the love meaning <laughs> Take some time to ask yourself whether your relationship is one that you're happy with. The Eight of Cups Tarot Love meanings it indicates that there are often some soul searching that needs to be done on whether your partnership is one that truly fulfills you. Can you imagine spending the rest of your life with this person? Do they encourage you to be your best self? Do they encourage you to grow? Or instead, are you with them because you're scared of being alone? going back into the dating scene again. This is unfair to both you and your partner. It takes a lot of courage to look honestly within and answer these questions, as well as walk away from life that two of you have built together. And the key words on the love meaning are leaving unhappy relationship and abandonment issues. So that's that one. Let's see about these pentacles here. So pentacles is a suit that is associated with security, stability, nature, health, and prosperity. So let's go ahead and see what this four of pentacles reversed means. So we're looking at the reversed meaning in love. Past insecure. So the uh, uh, reverse four of pentacles. Past insecurity may be healing now, allowing you or your lover to be less jealous and possessive. The reversed four of pentacles love meaning can therefore signal that the relationship can move forwards without being hindered by past wounds. If you're single, it may be that you are ready to finally open your heart to a new love and to let go of something that has prevented you letting your romantic life flourish. Well, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That's not bad. <laughs> exactly. It's not, it's not quite the smack you had earlier. It's just a little bit of a tap. All right. So let's go ahead for the Knight of Swords. And then the Knight of Swords is a suit of intelligence, logic, truth, ambition, conflict, and communication. So let's see what the Knight of Swords is telling us for this. Love tap. <laughs> exactly. A little love tap. Exactly. They're not always bad. They're not always bad. All right. Knight of Swords... All right. The Knight of Swords finds it particularly difficult to commit to a partnership. 
This person requires a lot of intellectual stimulation and without it can quickly become bored. This person can also be someone that, fi that finds it difficult to become too emotionally intimate with another person. If this doesn't represent a person in your life, the Knight of Swords tarot love meaning can point to a situation in which you'll need to muster your courage and quickly make decisions and take action. This can come in a form of making a commitment or a, rom a romantic proposal to a suitor or even winning a lover back should they be on the way out of the relationship. So it sounds like maybe a fear of commitment is calling that out maybe. Um, and it's saying that it's you if if um, and I and you don't have to tell me Taro but um, is uh, the romantic life is are, are we single in the romantic life or are we in some sort of relationship it doesn't have to be like a clear relationship it can be like you're talking to somebody but it looks like if you single as a Pringle <laughs> so it sounds like um, I want to go back um, to the first one but it seems like Knights is warning you that you might have um, that you had like maybe a fear of commitment and um, <laughs> yeah it really is um, and that maybe that's something we need to look at as a way as something that maybe might be hindering you from uh, developing your romantic life further um, so like that's you know a thing um, let me I want to look at the eight of cups again and double check what this means Ah, okay 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 so it sounds like So it sounds like this, um, that, that you've worked on yourself, um, and <laughs> it's like you've worked on it. Sorry, I'm laughing at chat. Um, it looks like you've worked on yourself, um, and that you have, um, sort of, um, done the soul searching that you need and you're finding what truly fulfills you in life as a person. Um, and then here in the middle here, we're talking about those, that, uh, the reversed pentacles, um, meaning that you, uh, as a result of that soul searching, um, you have let go of something that maybe stood in your way in general, um, from furthering your romantic life. So, um, the soul searching has, has kind of led into this card. And then um, the end here, we just have to be aware that, you know, you, um, the universe is aware that you have maybe some commitment issues and that will be something that you need to address um, when you decide to take that leap and get into a relationship with a partner. Um, don't be scared um, because, you know, you're soul searching and have um, kind of gotten um you know your inner self a lot healthier than it was maybe in a previous relationship which is maybe what that's saying um let me because i want to double check this four of pentacles reversed meaning oops silly all right so yeah, so you did soul searching, you healed past wounds that hindered you from having a romance in the past, and going forward, you may feel like you have commitment issues, um, but don't let that deter you. You need to know that within yourself that those wounds have been healed and you don't need to be afraid anymore. Does that make sense? Do we want any clarification? Also, I do like that 
please, please come. Kiss, kiss, fall in love. <laughs> I like how I like how Taro needs to chill in in all aspects of of their life. Not only generally, but also in your love life. Don't be too nervous. <laughs> but yeah, do we need clarification, Taro, my lovely? You think this is speaking to you? And it's giving you the answer you want, or do you want a clarification pull on any one of these cards? Perfect! All right. These lovely... Sailor Galaxia looks epic as heck. All right. Yeah, I do have a Fool card. Let's see if we can, um, see if we can find it. Here, we'll go ahead and look through the deck. Thank you cards very much for giving Taro what they were searching for. And we're just going to go ahead and... Because there's got a... There is a fool card in here. And if I had to guess, if anybody had to guess in the Sailor Moon Tarot cards, who's the fool? What do you think? Okay, Doc. Absolutely. We're going to do another stream. And and um, and you're gonna be first on the list for the tarot card stream, okay? We'll get you. We'll get you your next reading, okay? All right. I I see. I think I think Daft Pansy might be right. I'm pretty sure that it's Sailor Moon. Oh no, it's not in a shady way, honey. I think Usagi knows she's she's the fool. <laughs> All right, we've got Hierophant, Judgment. Sorry, I just don't want to miss any cards because if I miss, can't miss the fool. Um, it would probably be Usagi because she's known as kind of like the airhead, sort of like not great in school, a little flighty, a little um, head in the clouds, you know. Did I go past it? I don't think I did. But yeah, like if you want to, like I'm basically showing all the cards right now. So you get to kind of see what they look like, you guys. Because these are so beautiful deck. It's so pretty. All right. Come on. Where are you? You're here somewhere. Of course Sailor Venus, I mean, Sailor Jupiter Strength. Look at that beautiful card. See, I see all the other major arcana. Ah, look, here we go. What do we think? What do we say? There she is. The fool. That's Usagi for you. On brand for sure, for sure. Also, Earthbound, if if you haven't watched Sailor Moon, you should, and you should do it unironically. It's a it's a very good anime, even if you're not into Maho Shoujo animes. Exactly. Hi, Shadow Walker. Welcome in. She does. She does go on quite a journey. Quite a journey indeed. So there is the fool. Our sweet little Serena. Our sweet little Usagi. She's absolutely the fool. <laughs> All right. Before I go here... Anybody want a single card reading? Um, we can do that really quick before I leave, or we can we can have it go to a close here. It's up to you guys. Does anybody have an inkling? 
do a single card reading. Okay. You're tempting fate once again. Are you... <laughs> are we doing... Um, do we want to do general or do you want to do a different category this time? You want to do like finances or career? Yeah, exactly. Yep, Usagi or Serena. Finances, okay. So we'll do a single, single card pull for your finances here, Yanni Bunny. Yeah, Usagi. And then in the English dub, at least the original English dub, her name was Serena. But I watched the original English dub, so that's, I know her by Serena, but eventually Usagi was the second name I knew, I knew her by, so. Go ahead, Yanni Bunny, set your intentions. That didn't work out. Set your intentions for this single card pull here. Then one more and we'll go into the single card pull. I know, I know. So, so um, Usagi's name is Serena. Um, Tuxedo Mask is um, his name instead of Momoru is Darian. Um, and then we heard about Andrew earlier. Um, all of the other Sailor Scouts, Amy, exactly. <laughs> um, and then um, Lita for Jupiter. Um, Mina for Venus, and then Ray. It's still Ray, but I think it was spelled a different way um, for Mars. Um, uh, yeah, Andrew. Exactly. It was so funny because it was it was interesting because he worked at the he worked at the arcade, and then Serena would always be like Andrew, and I'm like, <laughs> this is such a such a dreamy name <laughs> all right yanni bunny let's go ahead and we're gonna do the one card yes oh my god molly is the best <laughs> so that is uh serena ursagi's best friend in school i can't remember what her equivalent is in the sub her name i mean but she has a new york accent and it is the most hilarious thing but it totally just makes sense <laughs> while you're watching it all right so yanni bunny my lovely are we ready because this one's going to be real quick all right ready all right you tell me when to stop okay and it's only one card so N yes naru that's her name Okay. That was very quick. All right. Thank you, cards, for the one card draw. Single card, guys. What lies behind the card? Let's see. <laughs> it's so, so this, this may be Kumada in Japanese, but this in the English one, his name was Chet. Like C H E T, Chet. <laughs> so the Ace of Wands. I think so. <laughs> like, I can't remember 100%, but somebody's gonna have to check me on that. But, like, I'm pretty sure it was, it was Chet. <laughs> you look it up. I have somebody searching the internet for me to see if I am completely insane. I remember his name being very, very funny. Yeah, 
All right, so the Ace of Wands here, Yanni Bunny. And we're looking at your finances. Chad. Well, that's even worse. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, Chad. But yeah, he I think he has a crush on Ray, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Sorry, it just was, it was very funny. I know reading chat, it was very funny. Where in the heck? Oh, there we go. It was out of order. All right. All right, Chad. <laughs> All right, the upright ace of wands can signal the end of economic struggles. Whatever strains existed before are beginning to dissipate. This might be because you're at the end of paying off debt. If you had not experienced stress from a specific source of debt, your finances might still improve in other ways. You might find yourself receiving a gift or a bonus. Whatever you receive is likely to just push you past your previous concerns. This is a good card but it is not a symbol of exorbitant wealth. Do not conflate this relief of pressure with an ability to spend recklessly. That decision is never wise. Instead, appreciate that you will have one less stressor in your life for a bit. I mean, that was a really good single pull card. It's saying that it sounds like if you're having any trouble in your finances currently, that that's going to come to end very soon and that it's warning you. Yes, he does have a surfer guy voice. It was always so funny. <laughs> maybe, maybe don't go overboard with the treat yourself mentality. Maybe treat yourself to one thing rather than treating yourself to a lot of things. You know? I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think you need more clarification there. It just sounds like you need to, you're gonna get relief soon and that you need to make sure that um, you're not overly spending when you do get that relief, okay? Yes, you gotta chad responsibly. No, never go full Chad. No, don't go full Chad. <laughs> All right. What do we think, Yanni Bunny? Good? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just one big squishmallow instead of seven. All right. Thank you very much for giving Yanni Bunny the answer she's looking for. Thank you very much. We're gonna give, we're gonna give these beautiful tarot cards one last thank you. Maybe next stream when um, I do another tarot reading, we can go ahead and look in depth at all of the designs if we want. But right now we've been up here for three and a half hours and I really appreciate everybody who came from Mitchie's raid. I appreciate Mitchie herself. She's a freaking angel, because she is a uh, godsend, and I love her. And I hope anybody who is in my chat right now who isn't following Mitchie, you go follow her right now. Right now. Because she is a delight, to say the least. So thank you so much, cards. Thank you for your knowledge and your answers for these people today. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Here, let me bring you back to my house. 
Thank you guys so much for coming out. I really, really appreciate you guys spending this time with me. Um, I am going to be gone this weekend. Um, I am going off to a different universe um, to experience um, what people here call a convention. Um, so I will be in a different universe at a convention. And when I come back, we can... Um, talk about all of that maybe play some more games but um for next stream what are we what are we thinking do we want to go back to doing some games do we want another tarot card stream or do we want to do maybe something different maybe do like a karaoke stream this upcoming next time what do we think you guys And if not, I will have like more options um, in karaoke. Yeah, karaoke is absolutely a possibility. But I um, go ahead and follow my social media um, on Twitter and Instagram. And I will probably... I might, I might. Or I, want, or I might, because uh, I feel... Um, Singing was something that I really hold uh, dear to me. It's actually something that I use to relax in general. So that might be the best one. <laughs> it, it helps me relieve stress in general. Which, you know, that can be chill. <laughs> Alright, so maybe we'll do a karaoke stream. If not, we might sit down, do another tarot stream. But... That will probably not be until next Wednesday. And then what I might do is I might change the time going forward. May, may not. Because, like, I have some friends that stream that I don't want to get in their way or, or um, sort of uh, block their viewers, so to speak. So we might be moving a teeny bit earlier than 8 p.m. Um, maybe to welcome some new people who maybe are in different time zones. So that maybe like maybe 6 p.m. But I will d absolutely definitely post that note only on my Twitter and my Instagram. But it will absolutely be on Twitch. If you look under my About tab in Twitch, I do have a Google Calendar that I will keep up to date as much as I can. And that will have a countdown until when my, when my next stream is. So keep an eye on that, okay? All right. I appreciate everybody who was able to come by. I appreciate, again, Mitchie so, 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 so much for giving me that raid. She doesn't understand. You don't understand how much that means to me. And I really appreciate it. And seriously, almost cried, but um, didn't. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And I hope that each and every one of you has a great weekend. And hopefully it's a good night tonight. Get some sleep um, and have sweet dreams. Okay? All right, everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on and, and wanting some readings. I really appreciate not only being able to give you guys the answers you're looking for, but the practice that I so desperately need with these tarot cards. And you definitely gave me the practice I was looking for tonight. So one last thank you to the cards. We thank you cards so much for giving us our answers tonight. And we thank you, the viewers, for being here with us. All right, Yanni Bunny, go sleep by the fireplace, okay? <laughs> you have a good night. And, and you guys um, have sweet dreams, okay? I will see you next time. Thank you guys so much. Stay magical.